Huh? It's a house! Huh? Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once. Share the video and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. There you go, there you go. <laughs> that was wild. It just sort of set it to uh, maybe I, my mouse slid by it or something. I don't know. It got set to members only for some reason. Oh my god! Man. You get about two more of those, Wild Wyatt, and we're going to say goodnight, all right? Let's see. West Virginia, all right. Awesome. Well, the video isn't really doing that great. What do you mean I tagged the wrong person? What are you talking about? Ah, what the hell are you talking about? No, somebody up there said, no, it's a preppy fail. That, I didn't tag anybody. I mentioned the wrong name. Preppy fail said, oh my God. Hey, thanks Kathleen Killeen. I didn't tag anybody though. I didn't, I just said the wrong name. Yeah, you know, the chat's moving by too fast. I don't know. I don't remember typing your name. Oh, up, way up there. Okay. Things are going by too fast. I know. I did. I did. I, I see it now. God, you guys are just like... I can tell this isn't going to be a great show. Just the way it's starting off. Yeah. Okay, we didn't we didn't do an earlier live, Zozo. I did a video earlier. I did a two minute live. Can we just get start going through it again? Um, let's see. We all type so much sometimes it's hard to remember. Well, I'm just saying it's just like it zips through the... I mean, I was just like, Psh, hey, what are you talking about? I thought I said it out loud, but I probably typed as I was saying it. What do you mean, look at, 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 look at? What does that mean? Right off the bat, bat. Man, this is this is one of those crazy shows already, man. I, can, I, I get the feeling. I got that feeling. Yeah. Look at 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 Yeah, I mean I don't disagree with that. 
Where do you think he stayed overnight at like his the apartment? I mean, it's kind of weird. I think like uh, do you guys think Stefan Stearns was at the party? Because it seems like he would be there. I mean, he was in town for the birthday, right? Yeah, and Wild Wild, I, I tagged the wrong person, okay? I didn't even know I tagged. I was just typing at the same time as I said it. Or maybe I'm just getting old and can't remember a damn thing that I do. Right. <laughs> it's pretty stressful when you do a show and it starts off where the um, you only have it set to members only and you meant to have it not be members only. Then you're trying to get right back on the air again. Hey, thanks, Caligal. Uh, waiting for what? <laughs> is this is this not going? The stream's not going right now. My clients have been all over the place today. Just one thing after another. I don't know. It's already feeling weird. Uh, this stream, you know, 134 people. Nobody's got. It's just not out there. It's not making it out to the YouTube world. Okay, Madeline's uh, grandmother said she was. He was there. Okay, yeah. So doesn't it seem like he? I mean, don't you think it's odd that they all say that he picked her up in the morning? Every one of them says that uh, Madeline was picked up by Stephen Stearns. So that means he wasn't staying at that house, apparently. You know. And if that's the case, then when would he have had time to harm her if she came home from the party? Does that make any sense? All right. I mean, right in here, I think it's this one actually it's in the uh, PDF file here where would Madeline stay with stuff I don't know where was he staying why did they have to tell him to go pick her up why would you have to tell Stefan Stearns hey uh, can you go can you pick her up where was he staying in a hotel because look at right here it says the mother advised her daughter stepfather Stefan Stearns picked her up from home and dropped her off at Hunters Creek Middle School. That's the mother saying that. Then just below it, an interview was conducted with the victim's stepfather, Stephen Stearns, who advised he picked the victim up and dropped her off. If he was at the house, you wouldn't say picked her up. Like if he was already at the apartment complex, he wouldn't have said that, right? And by the way, I first want I do want to make a comment on the uh, uh, Nikolai Nikolai Muse case. Uh, I thought that was we. This is exactly it, exactly what we predicted on the show last night. Is exactly what happened, right? All the voting and everything. It said, um, you know, everybody thought it was or let's see, seventy nine percent of the people thought it was self defense. And then 90% of the people thought it wasn't um, intentional. But 55% of us thought that he would be charged with one of the lessers. And that's exactly how it played out. They all agreed it wasn't intentional. But he got a massive, the first degree, uh, let's see, reckless homicide charge, which I guess you can get like 60 years in prison. 40 if you have mitigating circumstances. <laughs> so, I mean, he's already 52. He's never getting out of there. You can forget that. And it's just, you know what just sucks is everybody's acting like those kids are victims. And they are anything but victims. Those guys are 
pieces of crap and they should be ashamed of themselves and the parents should be just as ashamed for sitting in court going oh please give him something horrible I understand if it was your own kid you'd probably want something for him but that means that's because you're not thinking rationally at that time that's the truth the video is everything the uh, prosecutor in that case just like they did in the Justin Ross Harris case what they do is they they try to paint a picture of the person that's so horrible, a lying psycho. Oh, look at this guy, he's a lying psycho. Therefore, believe us when we tell you something, he is guilty of something. It's really bad. And that's why Justin Ross Harris got the uh, malice murder charge in a hot car death. And they, they took all of his other stuff and turned it into... Uh, look at look at this guy. Look at that. Feel good about this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's a terrible person. You know, even the, the last prosecutor, when he got up there, just literally trashed him as a person, talking about, oh, he's, look, he's a monster. Look, at he's weird. He's strange. So you guys better give him something. Hey, thank you very much, Pixie Blue up there. And guess what? He, that's exactly what happened. You know, the witch hunt, everything. Uh, I mean, I, I could see if he got some little tiny thing at the end, like third degree, uh, you know, something. I, I, I don't even know. It, it, like, if it's self-defense, it's self-defense. And I think that's what it was. I was nervous about how he took the knife out a little clandestinely, un, you know, but he's not required to go, hey, everybody, look, I've got a knife. You know, do a threat and first. He brought it out just in case, and then boom, he got knocked to the ground, punched in the face, and then he used it. And he didn't, like, maniacally go after people. He just attacked people rushing him. So I don't know, man. I don't know where you go from here. It rewarded a bunch of sick-ass kids. And anybody out there that is going to use the thing, they're just boys being boys. <laughs> You're an embarrassment yourself. Okay. Those kids deserve to be charged with something, too. You know, their actions is now put somebody in prison for like 40 years. What should they get? Shouldn't they get some charge of some kind? That their reckless behavior um, and taunting somebody, shouldn't they get something? You would think so. You would think so. Yeah. Anyways, that's my feeling on it. It's exactly what we predicted, though. And, you know, uh, people are like, well, you're wrong, Ray, you're wrong. Well, no, what do you mean you're wrong? We, he didn't get first-degree intentional homicide or second-degree intentional homicide. He got one of the lessers that were added in later as a backup plan. I mean, it was just sick, the whole thing. Let's see. Uh, I don't really have much more to say about that one, but it's just, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you know, fighting a battle for that, that kind of stuff. It's just not, I got a lot of crap I got to do. You know, it sucks. Opie gets a, an appeal and somebody else looks at it. Uh, I might take some pardon of some sort in the future. I don't know. But it's probably not a, I mean, it, it seemed like about 70% of the people were thinking that he had the right to do what he did. And man, that's, that's a pretty huge number. But I guess the sort of sensationalism wins out, you know. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's a monster. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get back to the uh, Madeline Soto. So what do you guys think? Uh, what are the things that make you think that possibly he was, uh, like that Madeline stayed with Stefan Stearns? I think there's a whole bunch of elements there. I mean, it's not like he was there. He wasn't at home. And how do we know? See, 
I think it's a huge thing. I've been saying this for a long time, you guys. The 8 o'clock in the morning. Yep, yep. I don't know why your comment was removed there, Jessica. But uh, Let's see. She said, back to innocent Maddie Soto because the Mew case is so infuriating. I agree. Uh, do we know where mom works at and her hours? I do not know where the mom works. Somebody said she worked at Disney 2 or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's... I thought she was... Some of that kind of stuff has uh, escaped my mind after... I haven't really talked about this case for a few weeks. Does anybody know where she worked? I thought it was like real estate or something. I, I, the grandmother seemed not too fond of Stefan. Or Stefan. That seems potentially significant. I don't know. She just didn't like him. She doesn't like, of course she says that now, you know what I mean? We say howdy here. Everybody's like that. The, the Monday, Monday morning quarterbacking coming out. Oh, yeah, I never liked that guy. I mean, what if she said, boy, I really liked him. Nobody's going to say that. Now, I think everybody's thought of it since the beginning, keeping it real. I just thought I'd take a look at it deeper with various things. Everybody's thought of that since the beginning. It's not just, you're, you're not ahead of everybody. I was trying to listen in. My bad. Oh, I just, do, well, the comment wasn't a bad comment. Uh, those drunk, uh, let's, let's just stick, let's just move over to uh, the Madeline Soto case. All right. I was thinking it's possible she slept over the grandmother's if the party ran late. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Did he pick her up when, okay, he was going to go pick her up. Was that at Jen's apartment? Because it sounds like it because she says that she came home. When she got home, she told us the stories about the presents and it was all happy and everybody was happy. Sharp tack could make sense. I don't know what that means. No idea. I could be wrong. I thought I remember mom saying she saw her that morning getting dressed. Yeah. That's what I was just saying a minute ago. At 8 in the morning, Jennifer says that she saw Madeline getting dressed at 8 in the morning. Well, that can't be correct. It's not. It isn't. It's false. It's false information. It's impossible absolutely impossible it she was trying to what but i think is significant about that is why is it even something that you needed to say or anything because we know it's not true right it's not true that that uh jennifer saw her getting ready at eight in the morning because at seven thirty-five, stephen stearns is already throwing away the backpack and laptop you'd have to then believe that it was really premeditated and he was already getting rid of that while Madeline, Mad, uh, Madeline's still in bed and about to get up and start getting ready for school. Yeah, no way. Uh, she was dead way before that. So I think that's something that Stephen Stearns said to, uh, Mad, uh, to Jennifer. It's hard for me to, to rip off their names. I, I struggle so bad. When I was, was recording the video, I kept saying she, he, she, and I was, then I realized, man, that, I don't even know who I'm talking about. <laughs> you know? It's hard to talk quickly about it because there's two she's and a he. And then if you switch to the one person, you got to make sure that they, people know what the hell you're talking about. Welcome, Amy Moore. And also, if you guys are out there, I know we only have 253 watching so far, but if you want to help support the Gray Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, I would appreciate it. Thank you. And the video doesn't really have a lot of views from earlier as well, so... I'm trying, I'm trying. Jen was too tired to drive Maddie to school, so she asked, right, but where was, that's what we're saying, where was Stefan? 
You got to tag somebody when you say their name up there. When you said sharp tack up there, you got to put the at symbol in front. J847. You said sharp tack could make sense. Just type in at. Then everybody knows you're speaking to a person. I didn't know what you were saying. How late did Jen work? Uh, we don't know the answer to those questions. But I wonder if it was like she was too tired to even, I mean, okay, so when Jennifer got home, was Stefan Stearns and Madeline sitting there in the house? Or could it have been that she was so tired, he just goes, you know, I'll take care of her tonight. I'll give her a ride to school in the morning. And then she believed that he did that and then helped him out by saying all those other things. Oh, I saw her getting ready at 8. Because we already know that's not true. But what relevance did that have other than placing Madeline uh, in the residence at 8? That's all it did. I mean, that, that, there's no relevance to say that at all. It's like a, it's something that Stephen Stearns wanted to have Jennifer say for some reason. And it's, it's interesting. It's almost like an error made <laughs> on, on their part. Like, okay, I, she's, she wasn't at the home, but can you make it sound like she was there? Because I was the one that took care of her and I brought her to school. Now she's missing. And they're going to think I did it because she stayed at my house. That's why I could totally see him doing that. And then, and then he says, can you just say that you start getting ready at 8 in the morning? You know, I know, I know you didn't, but can you just say it? And then she said it. Didn't that make some sense, just listening to that? I know it's not like, I, it, you know, I don't have any factual way to prove what I just said, but um, that's what I think. I'm too tired to drive you a few miles to school. Right, so she's so tired, that, and Stefan's already got her somewhere else, right? I mean, they weren't living together, apparently. So would he have taken her back to their house and then waited for Jen to get home? And then as soon as Jen got home, he went back to his apartment, but then somehow later in the night snuck back into the house, committed a murder, then put her in the car. You know, see how that helps? See how it gets kind of weird and convoluted? Because he had to have left because apparently she um, called him to say, can you pick her up? And when was that? When was the communication with uh, Jennifer regarding Madeline being picked up was it the night before or was that in the daytime you know like in the early morning hours I mean like at seven she gets on the phone hey can you pick her up I'm so tired I need to go back to sleep or why wouldn't she just sleep until 8 45 and give her a ride because school started at like 9 30 yeah there's some stuff doesn't make sense here Yeah, I, that's exactly what I think we say out here. I've been saying that since the beginning. Like that there's some that she he's using guilt against her because she wasn't awake and that's exactly the reasoning that Stephen Stearns used. I mean, that's why the timing that's what he used for the timing is like, okay, she's really tired, she's out of it. And maybe she even did something with him. Like maybe uh, Jennifer and Stephen Stearns were doing some recreational drugs or something the night before and then maybe he took her when she was passed out he took her with I, I don't know I, I, I don't know it's just so it's so weird you got to admit the part about that he was he picked her up to go to school that means he's somewhere else why would he have gone somewhere else if he was already there that night surely uh, Jennifer would have allowed him to stay there that night. So why would he need to be, you know, asked to come pick her up? Anybody? I can't think of anything. Nothing uh, legitimate. But uh, we're already starting off the show with a massive lull, everybody. A massive lull. We're already on the downward spiral. 
You picked her up, yet they are both saying we. Well, uh, yeah, I don't. The whole we thing doesn't isn't a big deal to me. I hear, I do hear her say it. I just think the we is when she's repeating a story that he told her to say. Because she immediately says, "Well, he's the one that drove her, her to school." So as soon as she says he drove him to school, you know that the entire story about how Madeline was dropped off was invented out of his mind. It was completely made up. Yeah, we know, Ivan, we know. Anyways, uh, yeah. we, we means nothing to me. Yeah, it just doesn't mean any, like, even if she said, yeah, we dropped them off, meaning it's sort of like our family unit. Yeah, we dropped them off. Yep. It just doesn't mean anything. But <laughs> see, that's another thing. Like, look at like, Jacqueline D's comment. Why is he lying if she's innocent? You could say the same thing in the um, the Mui case. He was innocent. Uh, he did. It wasn't. Um, it doesn't matter, right? But when you say, "Why is he lying if she's innocent?" Because she, what she's doing is she thinks she's just white lying because. She trusts um, Stephen Stearns with the information, and she believes him, so she's just willing to say the same story. The first time that she deviates from telling a story and believing it is when she said 8 in the morning, which is her telling a story and knowing for certain that that's not something that happened. Hey, thank you very much, Allie Cake, Billy Biker, Jessica Hood, and Lisa Holland. <laughs> and you, I, I, you know what's cool, Lisa Holland? You've had that same little uh, emoji icon for all the, what, how many months have you been? You're probably like a 40-something monther. You've been around for so long, always supportive. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're just, uh, I just want Gray to like me. <laughs> oh, come on. Have I ever not liked you? But I always can. I always know exactly your image because you've had the same one. It seems like from a long time. But man, that's a that's a that comment you just made is one the trolls will just love. Look at Lisa Holland didn't think Ray would like him and her unless she he got a super chat. <laughs> Here they go. Here go the trolls. Uh, you're 40 month there, Shelly Rock Girl Media. Oh, hey, thanks, Plato. <laughs> 50 months. Oh, my God. Look at that. Lisa Holland, four years and two months. So she was even here. Um, I guess that's right at the beginning of the pandemic, right? Basically, 2020, sort of. Yeah, right at the beginning, I guess. Like, uh, Probably February. I wonder if the grandmother would have said so if Madeline stayed overnight. You knew what? What did you know, Jerry? What did you know? I think during the party, Jen and Stefan were together and he got her messed up. Well, she wasn't at the party, though, Nita. So Jen wasn't at the party, so that doesn't make any sense. Thank you, Simply Me. I think maybe after the party, when Jen came home, he may have said something, and then maybe he took her. Doesn't he, doesn't the story make more sense if Stefan Stearns, like Zozo was saying earlier, was the one that actually, you know, and it's in my video earlier, that he's the one that had, was taking care of her that night elsewhere it just makes a hell of a lot more sense it explains why at 735 he knew oh wait a minute nobody will believe that i took her to school if the laptop and backpack are still in the house so he goes over there and he takes the laptop and backpack and he throws it into a dumpster then he goes to where madeline is and puts her in the vehicle 
You see what I'm saying? It, it kind of makes sense of some of the weirdness. Like at 7.35, he's going to go over there and get the laptop and backpack and throw it away because he knows when he's going to be driving around. Um, so he, I think he brings her back in the car to make it um, seem like she's alive and going to school. And he ma makes a few mistakes in that as well. But thank you, Peter. Mm, and welcome, Jerry. You're new. All right. Well, we'll see you in uh, 50 months, Jerry. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to open up the phone lines here and people can call in and, uh, I mean, there's so many different elements here. It's wild. I mean, everybody in here is familiar with the Madeline Soto case, correct? Because I can do like a really quick recap for, I mean, maybe that'll help as well just to kind of have other things in your mind correctly. I think most people are, but let's see. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Look at all my look at all the icons on my. That's just one of my three monitors. Too. <laughs> this, I don't even use them. I just sort of put one up there, hoping, thinking I might use it the next day. Thank you, Amy Moore. Yeah, I don't think so, Breaking Good. I don't think so. But uh, go watch it somewhere else, all right? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. So it was on February 22nd was Madeline Soto's birthday. And I'll just show you a picture of her really quick. Yeah, right here. This is Madeline Soto. That's her actually at the birthday right there in that picture. So she's at the birthday. Uh, well, it's her birthday on the 22nd. Then on the 25th, she has a birthday party, and it's over at her grandmother's house. Uh, one of the freaks sent me an email. She was like, oh, great, look. Uh, this is where the grandmother's house is. And it was the same, you know, and then I just looked up the... Well, she didn't say... I guess there was a map like this, but gave me the name, and I looked it up on Ben Verified, and it's right here, and the images all match up and everything. So look how close that is to the school. It's only 1.2 miles away from the school. But this is where the birthday party was right here. And then it was, that was on the 25th. And then on the 26th, Jennifer Soto goes to pick her daughter up from school, which is right there. And when she got there at 4 o'clock, I think the school was closed, so she e and, and her daughter wasn't waiting for her. So then she emailed one of the teachers, and the teacher said, well, she wasn't here today. And then uh, Jennifer was like, whoa, what the hell's going on? And then a little while later, a bunch of people started calling uh, the police reporting a missing person. And then... It wasn't too long after that where Stephen Stearns, the boyfriend, was arrested because they could see him on a vehicle apparently at 7.35 in the morning. This is the apartment complex right here. So this is what it looks like. Up here is where the school is. This is where the birthday party it was. And then down in this area is where the apartment is. And at 7.35, he was seen putting a laptop and backpack into a dumpster right here and then there's no other information about like which way did the car go or anything like that then at 8 19 the vehicle's coming into the parking lot with what appears to be a lifeless madeline soto in the vehicle then four hours after that he must have left there and drove all the way over to here it takes about 45 minutes or so to get over here 
and it was, I think it was around 120 or so, an individual was driving right here and saw a vehicle parked on the side of the road and there was an individual changing a tire. But the person remembered that it matched the description of the suspect vehicle or they were actually, you know, Stephen Stern's vehicle. They already had arrested him so they knew uh -huh. his vehicle. And when they put the picture out of it, he goes, oh yeah, I saw that one. It was parked right here facing in this direction, north. And, you know, he said the car was headed in the direction of Harmony over here. So that's exactly right, heading this way. And then there was some uh, helicopter footage out there that I was watching. And everybody was looking in a totally different spot for where they may have found her. And I noticed that there was two guys looking right inside here, and they had masks on, right inside this bush here. And when the helicopter came around, you could literally see the entire, everything, uh, the, you could see the crime scene, but it was really blurry, but it matched what a photograph, what a sheriff accidentally put out there. He selected the wrong image from his phone when he was uploading it to some like senior center or some, some crap like that. So anyways, they, they did find her body. They, they won't release the autopsy report. And, you know, he, on his cell phone, he had over 400 child pornography images. And whether they were all Madeline, we don't know. Um, he's been charged with, like, sexual conduct against a child, you know, like all those types of things. But he doesn't have, he hasn't been charged with murder yet. But it seems like it's going to happen because the autopsy wouldn't be released because it was a, um, I think it was domestic violence is the, you know, is what it's related to. And that means it's got to be that he was killed by the hands of Stephen Stearns. But they're not in a hurry. He's not getting out of jail they've got him on these charges where there's no bail already so they can just take their time take their time and get a case together where he'll end up probably uh, probably pleading because he wouldn't want all that stuff put out there and maybe that's better but i think it'd be great if they gave us the kind of the basic information of how things happen but you don't need to get into the specifics and etc Thank you, Shelly Rock Girl Media. So is that good enough? I mean, that's pretty much, uh, maybe if you don't know what Stefan Stearns looks like, he's right here. And I, I actually interviewed four of his friends early on in the case. Those are all pretty interesting. And that's him right there, a, a absolute psycho. Picture of him right here. Uh, he was... Uh, like into some really creepy stuff online and one of the interesting elements that people I, I uh, you know one of my sources on Facebook that I have he said hey look at that he talked to tele he was on telegram that night and it was actually 11 I think it was 11 how oh, was it 49 or something like that on the 25th so just after the party, late at night, he's on Telegram. And Telegram, we did a whole story on it, is a place where online predators are, it's, it's up and coming, like Reddit and other places where, you know, sex offenders um, get on there and they try to convince people to do different things, etc. And he was on there. He was on Telegram that night. And so it makes you wonder, what, what was he doing with Telegram that very night? And where, where was she? I mean, it does say, sound like the pictures that are on the phone. I don't remember what dates. Was there any pictures on his phone from that weekend? Or were they all the older photographs? Like from each year on the birthdays. I don't know if there was any on it from that weekend. The other photographs apparently had items. And you could tell that it was shot in the home. Should we open those up? Maybe look at that again. Could he be communicating? I think he's, no, I think he's communicating with other sex offenders and uploading the images. 
That's what I think he's doing. One thing that crossed my mind, though, is I was wondering if, you know, he was an, he's a predator. He's a child sex offender. But I was wondering if while he was on there sharing, they figured out who he was and then started blackmailing him to do different things or they would come forward. What if that's the reason? Because that's one of the things Telegram does is uh, they get somebody, they get them to send something, then they use that to blackmail them and they get them to do crazy things. So wouldn't that be crazy, uh, you know, just nuts <laughs> if uh, one of them realized that he was taking pictures of Madeline, knew what his name was and then said, hey, you better do this and you better do that. And that it all led to the death of Madeline. I mean, that's a, a possibility. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if that's the most likely one at all. But yeah, maybe we should open up the uh, these PDF files. They have some of the information in there. So it says the child was later identified because that was two, uh, okay, 2011. When was the image out there? Further is you affiant reviewing the image from August 2022 incident. So it was August 2022, reported missing. The mother, advisor, daughter, stepfather Stearns picked her up. Upon viewing the contents of Stefan's phone, several images and videos were located, which depicted an an apparent child and then it talks about the how she was you know you could see he, he was taking like nude photos okay yeah it goes back it's like 2022 on here let's see no it does say right here um, and that on between February 22nd, 2022 and 226, 2024, and the 26th is the early morning, you know, that day she went missing. The defendant, Stephen Michael Stearns, did violate Florida State statute and commit the offenses. Okay, so that means there is a uh, image on, oh, look at this, and an interview was conducted with Stephen. During the interview with Stephen, he provided uh, consent to search his phone. However, he stated he had accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone on February 26, 2024, the same day that Madeline goes missing. Wow, what a coincidence. See, in here they don't say a date, though, after that, describing anything that happened in 2024. So I'm not absolutely sure there's any images, but it says up here, it includes that date. Yep. Let's see. What was she hooking those headphones up to? Who? I don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, let's see, Mike, hmm, true, what? Maybe the mom wasn't really at work, but says she was to excuse missing the birthday party. I don't know. I don't think so. I think if that was true, she'd been arrested at this point. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Reached in her backpack for headphones. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true, right? The phone was left at home. Because she does that sometimes, you know? And, yeah, so maybe she, well, maybe she reached in to get headphones and then went, oh, my, I don't have my phone. <laughs> she didn't have her phone, so what was she looking headphones to? Right, I just said that. Let's see. Well, that's all I'm going to read out of that one. I guess we could read the other document. I think one of the ones that's interesting is this one here, though. Because this is, I don't know what document this came from. 
but it's more of the narrative and sort of spontaneous that day. So this is the one that said on February 26, 2023, at approximately 1948 hours, I, Deputy Joseph, responded to Village Park Drive, Orlando County, Florida, regarding a missing juvenile. While on the scene, the step-parent stated he dropped his daughter off at school, and when the mother went to the school, the daughter was not there. The parents searched within the neighborhood and places where the daughter uh, may have gone. The parents could provide, a, uh, lo could provide a location where the daughter may have been, but yielded negative results when deputies checked the area. The juvenile was entered into FCIC, NCIC, and EMER, or, or EME resource as missing disabled. My investigator re revealed the following. So this is the interview with uh, Jennifer, the mom. When I arrived on the scene, I spoke with the mother, Jennifer Lizette Soto, who gave me verbal and sworn written testimony. On February 26, 2023, at approximately 8 in the morning, Jennifer observed missing Madeline Soto getting dressed for school. Stepfather Stephen Stearns, who isn't a stepfather, so I'm not really sure where that came from, took Madeline to school, dropping her off near the intersection of Town Loop Boulevard and Hunters Park. Uh, Lane at approximately 8.30 hours. Jennifer went to Hunters Creek Middle School in an attempt to pick up Madeline at approximately 1,600 hours. See, this one doesn't say that he went to pick up Madeline. It says that he just took her to school. Uh, Jennifer went to Hunters Creek Middle School in an attempt to pick up Madeline at approximately 1,400, so 4 o'clock. When she discovered Madeline did not make it to school, in an effort to find Madeline, Jennifer looked through the neighborhoods near Madeline's school and went to her mother's business office located at... Oh, man, that would be cool to have that. Where is Village Park Drive? Let me type in there. Village Park Drive. So it should be right up by... Okay, yeah, so the grandmother lives here, but the business is apparently right along here, right in there. And that makes sense, right? It's really close to uh, the school. So I'll just put like a, a pin in here, I think. Let's say the mother, grandmother worked here in this area. Don't know the place. So right there. Huh. I later spoke with Stephen Stearns, who stated in a verbal and sworn written statement the following. At approximately 8.25 and 8.40 hours, Stefan dropped Madeline off approximately one block away from her school. Stefan watched Madeline leave his vehicle and walk towards the direction of, the, of her school. As Stefan was driving away, he could see what appeared to be Madeline searching through her big bag. He did not think anything of it due to Madeline usually looking through her bag to find headphones. Huh. Well, when did he say that he was... I mean, maybe he assumed she was looking for headphones. I mean, how would you know that? I mean, I guess, you know, maybe they found out later. See, I don't think it's a big, you know, gotcha moment regarding the headphones and the uh, the phone, right? And the reason I'm saying that is because, I mean, he's just saying, hey, maybe she was looking for a phone, and then later they find out, oh, the phone's at home, look. I mean, when did they find out the phone was at home? Was it later? Was it right then when he was interviewing here? I, I don't know. It's just sort of a, I mean, it, it could mean something, but it might not, and you could easily argue it. Like, why did you ask for, think she was looking for headphones when her phone's at home? And he goes, well, at the time of the interview, I didn't realize her phone was at home. Oh, okay. 
I mean, it's really easily explained. Who who are you talking to, Misty? Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Is it my hat? Is that what's going on? <laughs> But anyways, you guys, we're back in Lowell City here. Someone's going to have to throw me in prison one of these days because it's probably about the only way to get this going. What the hell? Look at that. What is that? Is that a real picture? <laughs> oh. That guy's always putting out jokes. I haven't done anything mean yet, though, Esther. One of these days. One, well, later I might, though. I might. Thanks, Kami. Gray is so mean. You know, there's this channel out there. Every show that they do is it's a trashing of the prosecution and hating on the Delphi, like Richard Allen's innocent. But if you go over there and you say anything, they go, oh, how dare you? Oh, you ruined our mood because you think, I mean, and then they act like that they're really open-minded. <laughs> they're, they're not open-minded at all. They're about the clo most closed-minded people you've ever heard. I mean, it, it's, it's creepy. And there's this one lady, that's all she does now. She doesn't talk about any other case. That's the only one she's got. Yeah, I know, I've got the, doc it's only one document. It's not documents with an S. I've got it. It's just not, it's just another defense thing. Oh, look how he was treated in jail, everybody. It's just, it's garbage. They're just trying to augment their claim that Richard Allen was, you know, mentally, he got like, I don't know, mentally damaged because of the way he was treated in there. <laughs> so he, he confessed, you know, not really. He just was so mentally deranged that he, hey, thanks so much, Kathy Chapin. No, it's just crazy. And this uh, girl, the lady that's doing it, used to cover um, Summer Wells endlessly. And she always was thinking, oh, but, you know, the parents, oh, look at the parents. They look like they did something. Oh, they fair. But man, if you say that Richard Allen did it, oh, oh how dare you? It's innocent till proven guilty. Oh. <laughs> you ever notice that? That the people that defend the ravenous whack jobs where, where it's clear, they always say it's innocent until proven guilty when everybody knows that already. But you have a right to have an opinion on what you think. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see, look through the bag to find headphones so he could put them in before the school. Uh, Stephen began heading home when he attempted to stop for a vape juice at a nearby vape shop, <laughs> but determined it was closed. So Stefan went to Kissimmee. Once Stefan was home for about an hour, he went back out to retrieve a vape juice. <laughs> See, you know what vape juice means? Some sort of handling of Madeline's situation. That's what vape juice means here. Kissimmee is where they live, I think. Am I saying that wrong? Maybe Kissimmee was where... Yeah, I thought Kissimmee was where they lived up here. Oh, hell, I can't even remember now. Maybe where she was found. I... Yeah, it's where their apartment is, right? Yeah, like here's Kissimmee right here. There's the apartment. Oh, see, I remembered just fine. 
I only got like five hours of sleep last night, so I think that might be where my brain is a little slow. You know, slower than it normally is. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't li live near St. Cloud. No. Stephen Stearns lived with Jen here, and then a month ago he, uh, I guess, moved out, but he lived with his parents, I think, again, or somewhere near them, and he just came up to visit, right, for the birthday. Oh, well, there you go, chicken wing. But uh, right now we're at about 40% of the goal. So trying to augment stuff with the video, but the video isn't doing well, and we'll just have to see how things go. You seem pretty spry regardless of... <laughs> well, maybe, maybe a little bit. I've just... All right, so let's get back to the the overall theme here. What are the elements that make you think that she may that Madeline may have stayed with Stephen Stearns that night and not actually at the residence? Because so you actually you have in here where this part here where. Jennifer does say on Sunday she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she okay that's true right she was at the party we see the balloon with a whole bunch of people in there she doesn't mention that Stefan was there she had the but she might consider him part of the family so would wouldn't need to necessarily say that the best day she was so happy she showed us all her gifts um she was she's just a happy girl and because he, because he was there. That's why she wouldn't take the bus. Because he's there. Why would she take the bus? He would just pick her up. She showed it on on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy. So you know, she had the best day. I just, hey. you know, there was no, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. Yeah, so she does say when she got home from the party. And so one thing that makes me think, I said in the video, that she did make it home is the ease in which she said this. Because all of this stuff is perhaps things that are real in her mind. But whenever she's telling the story that Stefan told her to say, she kind of looks up and thinks for a moment. All right? I mean, so that's that's the thing, is you actually know that she doesn't, have a memory of Madeline being dropped off at school because she wasn't there. It was uh, Stefan doing it. So when she's telling the story about how the day went, it's purely from words that he said. And that's why she kind of looks up and kind of goes, oh yeah, yeah, because she's thinking about what she's supposed to say. This part here, she just throws it out. So that's an element in the favor of Madeline being at home. No moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. Although, I mean, you could argue like, why is she even saying when she got home from the party? <laughs> you know, it's almost like you, uh, like, I think we'd assume that. But, I mean, that's how people talk. I don't think it's strange that murder charges haven't happened yet because they've got them locked up with no bail and they're just going to put together a perfect case where he has no out. Then they'll charge him. So I'd say the next few months they'll charge him. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. They that's they have him locked up, and he's not going anywhere. And you know, normally when you charge somebody, you need to go, you need to charge them, and start looking 
to get uh, you know warrants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then you got to put together a case, and then you can. Uh, I guess the way it normally would be that you need to arrest somebody. Or you can even beforehand get a search warrant to get information and then quickly come up with probable cause to have him arrested. What time is it? Oh, yeah. But in this case, they could already prove on his phone that they could arrest him. So they just arrested him quickly and... Based on the information that was on his phone, he isn't going to get bail. He's going to be staying in there. So now they can just start, you know, the, the judge will give them every warrant they want. They'll be able to check out everything, put the entire case together, and provide it to good old Stephen Stern's uh, attorney at some point, And they're going to look at it and go, oh, Jesus. Yeah, you're, you need to plea on this one. But maybe the state doesn't want to get a plea. I mean, he's definitely death penalty eligible. And if you listen to some of the interviews that I did, I mean, he's a, a wacko. I mean, he, when he was younger, living in an apartment with two other roommates, he set up a camera in the, I think the, I can't remember if it was the bathroom, somewhere in the, in the house where it filmed the girlfriend of the roommate nude and then he would store it out on a server but he also apparently had uh, you know CSAM material out on the same server and he um, let's see the roommate cut a deal with the mom uh, for some money to not report it okay so you have that and then you have another time where another roommate, they were friends, or I guess they were just friends, they weren't roommates. And he went over to his, this guy, the friend's house one night and was trying to film his mom through like some window. And then they caught him and he almost got shot. So they, you know, the father of the friend gave Stefan the bullet to remember. What he, what he almost got, what almost happened to him. And then that same friend said that when they were younger, he used to collect semen and put it into vials because he thought if women ingested it that they would become pregnant. So he, he claims that he put it in drinks and stuff at school. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely crazy stuff. And he was really into games that kids play. It's wild. Yeah. But anyways, you guys, we're, we're back on to Lowell City tonight. Lowell City. We've been on it for an hour and seven minutes. So yeah, he's where he belongs. I thought it was genius how Sheriff tried to get Stearns relaxed enough to maybe say something accidentally. Oh, I don't know. Thank you, January Jop. Makes me think Stefan might have fancied himself a werewolf. <laughs> no, the bullet was given to him. Just a regular bullet. It wasn't silver. Yeah. Oh, there they are right there. All right, let's do the... Uh, you guys can call in. There you go, right there. And you tell me what... I, I want to kind of limit it to trying to figure out if there's information out there that leads you to believe that Madeline stayed with Stefan that night. The, the elements for me are like, how in the hell uh, did both, you know, both of them say, and apparently the grandmother also said that he picked up Madeline. 
So that means he came from somewhere. But how did they, she share with them, meaning her and Stefan, the present idea the night before. So he came over, like he dropped Madeline off after the party. They're hanging out together. Then he leaves. Madeline goes to bed. But then he comes all the way back in the middle of the night and kills her somehow. And then so that makes it more complicated. Unless when he was there and Jennifer comes home, maybe he gave her some, you know, they both did a little drugs together and she got really out of it and doesn't remember anything. So she's willing to believe what Stefan tells her and wants to say what he says because she looks really bad too. So you could have stuff like that. But the story with Madeline being with Stefan Stearns makes way more sense if you're looking at uh, what the 735 backpack and laptop in the dumpster. That makes a hell of a lot of sense, doesn't it? Like he's just showing back up there because he knows, oh, wow, okay. If, she, if I say that she went to school and her laptop and backpack are still at the house, that's going to be a lie. So I got to take those items. Hello, this is Gray. Oh, Hello. Boy. Hello, yep. Uh, you got to you got to turn down the audio in the background. You can't have that playing. Everybody okay, everybody you. should know that already. Okay, what do you got? Um so I think like the whole situation it it shows that like she is being fed information from Stefan. Like right. for sure. Yeah, that's what I say. I've been saying that. Yeah. I I, I just think that the way that she acts and and the whole the way she has to search for answers and then even on the 911 call when her sister asked her what she's wearing it's like she had to wait to get a response to figure out what she was wearing it's like who was she asking what she was wearing and why did they know and she didn't know yeah so, so on the 911 call where which one where is she at in there there's like 7 minutes of a whole bunch of different people is she speaking on it so it's her sister calling i believe that's mm -hmm. what we think and then um, in in the 911 call, the operator asks her, I believe this is the very first 911 call place, the operator asks her specifically, what was she wearing when you last saw her? Mm -hmm. And the sister says, hold on. And she says, Jen, what was she wearing? And then the operator asks a few more questions and some time goes by before they can actually come up with an answer for what she was wearing. And then she just says a green hoodie. We think she was wearing a green hoodie. So I just think that's odd. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely something green on the ground in the crime scene mm -hmm. photo. So maybe that's what that was. Yeah, it is. It is odd, but I do believe that like living with someone being intimate with someone for so long, you must know something isn't right. Like there it's, well, it just depends I'm not on. Saying she well, it depends on how good. Child. Well, no, it just depends on how good the, you know, the lying and deception is. Yeah. He seems like somebody that would be good at that. That this, it's not. Yeah. It's not like when, when people say that because they're just trying to think that. I don't think Jennifer has anything to do with anything. Like I, I feel like she's just kind of not mentally all there anyway. There. And she just totally, yeah. completely used her that ton of stuff, and she just kind of believes stuff everything seemed kind of reasonable to her you know i think that there are women like that too like my I, my grandmother personally was like that um she stayed with a man i feel like it's kind of they don't want to see it so it's not there type of deal and I, and i think it's subconscious i don't think she is evil i just think that she's very naive mm -hmm. yeah the least. yeah and, and maybe she just you know, there might have been stuff that she noticed, but it was explained away, like in a way that, yeah. oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And she's just willing yeah, to exactly. believe. I don't know. It's hard to say. but It is, but that's just, that's my opinion. That's all I wanted to say. I just thought that 911 call is odd, how she doesn't really know what she's wearing. Mm -hmm. I think it's also odd, like the birthday party thing. I have a daughter about to turn 11 years old. There's no way I'd miss her birthday. I mean, and... 
we're not rich, you know. So, well, it might be one of those things where she couldn't get off work. You know, like I have my one mm-hmm. of my kids right here. He uh, he was supposed to take a um, go to the dentist, like for this huge dental procedure coming up, and it was like in yeah. a couple of weeks. And they go, well, you can't you can't have that day off. So they had to like reschedule the whole thing. Yeah. So he's not just gonna go to go. He's not just gonna go to the dental appointment um, just to go to the dental appointment and lose the job. I get in trouble. So you don't know what her situation. Oh, no, I is. get that. Yeah. yeah, but that does also seem kind of like more spontaneous. You know, birthday. You have a long time to plan ahead. And well, then who knows how well they plan it? Maybe can... two weeks before they go. Hey, you guys want to have it over here? Most people, like her, yes. do you think she's yeah. really one of those, like, we planned it out for six months on a birthday? Come on. It's, it's like, true. It's true. I mean, it looked yeah. nice, and, you know, she wouldn't want to cancel something And like it could that. just I been something that, that spontaneously, maybe it was supposed to be on a different day, and they go, well, none of the family members had those, those that time off, so they go, hey, we can all do it on this Sunday. And so, but that was the day that she had to work. I mean, we don't know the whole the yep. situation, so... In that case, it's hard to say. I, I hear that a lot. She missed yeah. it. It's just what happens is, is people want to demonize everybody by using specific terminology like, I would never have missed that party. So therefore... True, but we're all different. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and, and the circumstances are I guarantee you, you wouldn't go to the party if your work said, hey, we need you here. We really absolutely need you. We, yeah, you're, you're, no, we have I'd nobody else. I'd reschedule the party, but I'm different mom, too. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe, well, maybe you'd reschedule it. But let's say it was last minute and everybody else was going to be going. And your work, yeah. uh, you already had it planned, and your work wasn't going to allow you to do it. Like, they needed you there. Everybody else was gone. You were the only hook they had. You'd have to go because yeah. that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, b- birthdays aren't the most incredibly... I mean, they're, yeah. they're important stuff, but it's not like, oh, my God, the world's coming to an end if I don't get to go to the birthday. <laughs> you know, it's a freaking yeah. birthday party. Yeah, I understand that completely. And I think it will make more sense when we understand what kind of job she had, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, some more details will help. But but those are just the things I wanted to call in and, and mention. Yeah, I wish, we had so thank ma- you. I wish we had made more of the information about stuff that we're talking about right now. Like the actual answer, exactly. you know, like, hey, how come she didn't go to the birthday party? How come? Yeah. You know, why was it on that day? What? Oh, just everything. Exactly. Um, but we don't get to yeah. hear anything. Maybe someday we'll get to have the whole story. <laughs> but, Hopefully. <laughs> uh, but anyway, say thank you very much for calling. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Gray. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, definitely gonna have to be thro- thrown in prison, you guys. This is uh, we're just dead as a doornail, and I gotta got the numbers to reach. Not sure how to do it. Let's see. They did not know that. <laughs> yeah, this person's just really crazy up here. <laughs> this. Uh, I'm not going to chill out. Jen is a liar. No, no, you don't. Harass me. I'll. Re- oh God, get out of here, Jesus! What an embarrassment. You're harassing the chat, over and over and over again. Anybody else calling in? Always one. Oh yeah, let's listen to the. I've got the call right here. Okay, what's going on, Evan? We need police fire medical. No, it's not a medical issue. We we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times. It's not loud enough. And the police didn't show up yet. Are you listening? Or yes. do you know? Okay. Yes. Okay. Ismail, I see you right here for you. Well, I'm, unfortunately, I have to, I'm going to have to say it again, you guys. You guys know what we do on here every single night. The freaks help support the channel. We raise funds to help allow me to keep doing these shows. 
and then I also donate a huge portion of it each month to various charities. So when we have nights like this where it's just a lull city, it's hard to justify anything. It's difficult. Like you're just doing these shows and people know what we're doing and yet we have, <laughs> I mean it's crazy. I don't know what the hell's going on. You know, it's wild. We've been on it for an hour and 20 minutes. We're only at 40%. Uh, we're going over a theory, Daddy Poppins. You must have missed it. It's in the title of the video. I wonder what evidence they found with the body. I don't know. But if you're out there and you're able to help support the channel, that'd be great. Um, if not, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? But that's not what I'm making. <laughs> see, what's crazy is the number you see on the screen right there, YouTube takes 30%. And then I give away 33% of the gross income after YouTube pays out. Okay, so you can say whatever the hell you want to say, but that's the reality of it. That's why we've given away uh, $194,600 in a four-year period. Yeah, get rid of those accounts. They're, they're just troll accounts, you can tell by looking at them. By gray, they don't know where the murder happened. What does that even mean, Salmer? Can you can you write a little bit better than that? Thanks, Kathy Chapin. Going for a wave. Not looking promising. Not looking promising. Uh, what does that mean? They don't know where the murder happened. You mean by the way, gray? Yeah, nobody. Uh, we don't know where the murder happened. They might. Law enforcement might know. Yeah, we got, a bunch, we got a bunch of troll accounts coming in here. Uh, I, I guess they call it grifting. If somebody is trying to raise the funds on their channel because there is no ad revenue whatsoever on these live streams, and you guys are the sole uh, source of the income, everybody knew this all the years we've been doing this, and then all of a sudden it gets where I'm having to talk about it all the time, and I really I don't like it. Now you can say, well, then don't do it. Well, then we won't be able to do all the great stuff that we've been doing too. You know, that's what sets us apart is like, you know, I don't really know how to explain it other than I've explained it 17,000 times. We have a DNA fund that has 80,000 that we've put into it. We've got a scholarship fund that we're doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, thank you, Christina Preston. I don't like it, Gray. I just want to watch. Well, you bastard. <laughs> okay. Well, you do what you want to do. Uh, you know, if I get relegated to just making video after video after video, then that's what we'll end up having to do. But sometimes those don't even do well. It's crazy. Like the one today, you know. I'm convinced Mad was not home in AM. She would not need a ride to school, probably. Huh? You mean Maddie? I'm going to open up this uh, other software program and be able to play. What the hell? Where did all the... Oh, I think a bunch of my icons got moved over to this other page. That's why there's so many over here. Yeah, it's like it switched monitors or something. That's crazy. What happened? That's why there's so many. This monitor never used to have that many. Is it working? Or if I, yeah. Weird. Hello. This is great. Hey, what's going on? One that just commented. Oh, you're the one that just commented? They okay. don't know where the murder happened. Uh-huh. Here's my theory. Well, we don't know if they know or not, right? You don't know if they know. Well, well here's my theory. On the original arrest record, they did say that he was seen near the school by 810. Jen said that she saw her daughter getting dressed 
at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's not that's a lie though. That's not true. We know that that's a lie, uh -huh. but we don't know if the murder happened on the way from Grandma's house to Mom's house. Yeah, we don't know that. We don't know if the murder happened in Kissimmee uh -huh. or if it happened in Orlando. Yeah, we don't know that. If they yeah. have, if Kissimmee is in Osceola County, Orlando's in Orange County. Uh -huh. Therefore, if they don't have a scene of where the murder happened, they don't have a jurisdiction to charge this person, even though both Orange County and Osceola County are in the North Circuit here. I'm from the area. So that's my theory of why they haven't made a murder charge at this point. It's oh. because they don't have a clear jurisdiction of where this murder happened. Did it happen in the car? Did it happen at her house? Did it happen somewhere down the road as he was going home with her? We don't know. Also, we don't know where Jen was mm. this whole night. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean we don't we don't know what they do though. Like they could probably see her car pull in and and park and you know, and then it left later, maybe the next day. I mean, I don't know what Jen was doing up until four o'clock, but they probably know exactly was, what she's was, been doing. I was thinking about this the other day. Actually, two days ago. She said that she was at work. She couldn't go to her birthday party because she was at work. So if she's at work at around 4 to 5 o'clock at night, that means she works at 3 to 11 shifts, maybe. I'm assuming. I'm just throwing this out there. Mm -hmm. That means if she got off at 11, she had to be home from 11 on to that morning or 12 midnight to that morning mm -hmm. if she got killed during that time why didn't she hear what happened why was she not, why was she not aware well i mean maybe like when she got home. maybe when she got home uh stefan's up and he goes hey you want to do some you know did a little drugs or something and got a really drowsy and then he was able to do what he wanted to do with madeline and then she like was kind of passed out almost all night and then wakes up sort of late and he goes hey i took her to school for you you know and then he she's willing to accept all of his stories because you know he trusts mm -hmm. her and you know just sort of goes along with what he's saying but i think after her body was found she probably completely changed her mind probably even after he was arrested I don't know. There's there's stuff like I that. I, I see what you're saying. I mean, I think I think there's some uh, compelling arguments to uh, about her not being there. That Madeline was actually with Stephen Stearns, and then uh, just sort of let Jennifer stay by herself that night. Like, oh yeah, you're tired and everything. How about if I just keep her over here tonight? Oh, I'll, I'll take her to school in the morning. And so that would make sense with the he took her to school, right? Or he picked her up. Yeah. Uh, the pick her up part, though, is weird because that means he drove to her house. But why would he need to be? Why would he be somewhere else to pick up Madeline? Does that make any sense? Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Somebody did say. Somebody did say locally that he was at the party. Yeah, I thought the mom. Somebody that knew. Yeah. That he was at the party. And somebody, and then the police said that they saw him at 7.45 in the morning dropping her stuff. And then the affidavit said that he was seen, his vehicle was seen at 8.10 around the school. Mm -hmm. So at some point between 7.45 and 8.10, she, she, she was already dead. At that time, if he's dropping, well, I think it's the way before dumping that. Her stuff I think it's way before. It, well, seven thirty-five is when he was dumping the stuff, so she's obviously dead before that. See what I was saying? I don't know if you right. got here kind of late, but I was thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if? See, here's what his logic in his mind would be: if she's with him, she'd be saying, he'd be going, "Hey, listen, I gotta go. Um, I got. I'm supposed to pick her up and take her to school, but she's dead. That's what he's thinking. She's dead." 
Mm-hmm. So I need to make it look like I picked her up to go to school. So he has to go over to the apartment to get the laptop and the backpack out of the apartment. The backpack. And then bring it. Yep. And then he throws it in the dumpster at 735 so that it appears to be gone like it should be if he took her to school. Right? Isn't that weird? That, yep. makes, that actually makes more sense in the story than them being there. In some ways. So if yeah. that is the case, I think he picked her up from the party. He killed her in the car. He had her in the car the entire time. Mm-hmm. But where did the murder occur? Did it occur in Kissimmee or did it happen in Orlando? Yeah, I mean, I guess they'll be in figuring Ar- all that out. But they're they're just, I think they're not, they haven't charged him yet because they don't, they don't have to. They can just put together a perfect case because they have all the time in the world to do this investigation, and it might even be a bigger investigation, kind of like Keegan Klein in the Delphi case where it led to one of the largest child pornography rings in Indiana state history. So who knows what this guy was involved in. They might be just digging and digging and digging and digging and finding tons of stuff on him. So it could be what you're saying, but I think it's more likely that they're they're not in a hurry whatsoever. He has no bail. He's in there for a long time, and they can just get every warrant they want, search around, and then when they finally have a perfect case where he has no out, that's when they'll charge him, and then his attorney will probably go, oh, man, you need to cut a deal, <laughs> or something crap like that. But, but Maybe uh, they should offer him a plea deal and say, hey, just tell us where it happened and yeah. be done with it. Like You're this, going to jail yeah. for a long time. Yeah, maybe say, well, take death penalty off the table for life without parole if you tell us every single thing and it matches the evidence we have. If it doesn't match, then you're going to get the de- death penalty. So let's go. Go ahead. What do you got? Oh, you're screwed. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't seem like somebody. He would always have some sort of a fib in there. He'd have a hard time doing that, telling the truth, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it is. Right. I, but what do you think? Do you think it's a possibility, though, that he... That she stayed with him that night? He was definitely with her that night. I mean, but elsewhere, not at her, at Jen's apartment. Not at the house. Yeah, I think Not at the house. And then another another clue of why it wasn't at the home is Mm -hmm. because the home wasn't secluded for a long time as a as a crime scene investigation like it should have been if a murder occurred in the home. So they don't have hmm. sufficient forensic evidence to say the murder occurred at the house. Oh, so maybe they never even had a, uh, like they didn't bring the crime scene truck into the apartment and go through it forensically as well. They did. They did, but it was very quick. Oh, like, yeah, nothing here. Like it probably did the, uh, the, like, uh, what do you call that? The blue star or whatever on the wall, see if there's any blood somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Who knows? And my theory is that maybe he suffocated her, and that's why there's not, like, mm-hmm. blood what evidence. There's no real forensic evidence to say yep. that was, she was, like, stabbed. That's exactly what I was saying at the beginning. Like, that's what I was saying at the beginning. Like, I, it, she could have been killed in a way that wasn't apparently obvious that it was a homicide. So if you're suffocated, it might not be easy to tell. Uh, but it sounds like, given that uh, autopsy not being released, that the way they worded that, that the it was a domestic violence-related Violent. death. So that means there is something related. Like if she was accidentally overdosed on a drug, I don't know if you would call that a domestic violence-type situation. I don't know. Maybe maybe it does fall into the under there, but I don't know if it would. So. My guess. She was suffocated. She was choked yeah. or something, mm-hmm. and that was the end of it. Yeah, that makes. But makes I don't sense. think there was any like blunt force. There was any. I don't think there was any blood anywhere that they could say he mm-hmm. hit her, he stopped her, or something. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Well, good stuff. Thanks for uh, calling in. What, what was your name again? All right, Delmar. Del Delmar. Selmar, Selmar, with an S. Oh, Selmar? Okay. <laughs> All right, well, thanks yeah. for calling. Have a good one. <laughs> thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
911, what is the location of the emergency? Okay, what's going on, Evan? Do you need police fire medical? No, it's not a medical issue. We we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times, and the police didn't show up yet. Are you listening? Or yes. do you know? Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I see it right here for you. Uh, yes, ma'am. I see it. This is waiting for a deputy to respond. They haven't. They haven't come here yet. I, I'm aware, ma'am. I see it. I, it's waiting for a deputy to respond. You're waiting for a deputy to respond? Yes, ma'am. And how long? What do we need to wait? It's, it's a child missing. I understand that, ma'am, but I'm just not able to give out ETA. I, I'm, I don't know when they'll be there. So how long do we need to wait? This is an emergency. Ma'am, we, we have the information, but it just it, they're, they're trying to get to someone as soon as possible. So this is not important for you guys? Really? Ma'am, we are very busy in the area. Look, I understand uh, they'll be there as soon as they can, okay? Hmm. Well, that was the first call. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Um, okay, police or medical. Hi, um, I called not that long ago reporting a missing child. I just wanted to know how long the cops are going to take to get here. Okay, hold on, let me open up the call and let's see. The call is still currently pending to have the deputies respond out there, but we don't have any available deputies. We still have the call up, though, holding. Okay, so... So no one's on their way yet? Not yet, no. Mm, does it take long for them to respond to the call? If there's a big emergency in the area um, and there's nobody, there's no units available, they put the calls on hold. But as soon as one becomes available, they respond to the next pressing call. Okay, yeah, uh, we just need one here urgently. So I understand. Um, we still area. have the call. We still have the call holding. Okay. Yes. Yep, we still have the call holding for them. I'll go ahead and update them with the information. All right, thank you, because this happened yeah. very recently, so we just want to get everyone here. She's been missing since 8 a.m., so we want to get everything done as soon as possible to try to find her. I understand. Okay. Right, thank thank you. you. 911, what's the location of your emergency? Um, it's and is there a specific apartment number, ma'am? Uh, it's and do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. Okay. And what is the name of the business there, ma'am? The business? Um, okay. And the child that you're trying to report missing, are you calling on behalf of the of the parent? Yes, yes, on behalf of the mother. She's okay. Child. Okay. And then so, and ma'am, how old is the child? And could I go ahead and get her name? Yes, it's me. And is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. Okay. Blonde and hair, dirty blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay, hold on with me here. And then what color shirt and pants was she last seen wearing? Um, hold on, let me ask. Here's that part. Then um what color shirt and like what was she last wearing? Hold on, oh, we're finding out. Okay, and then how long has it been, though, since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off um, at school this morning, and apparently she never showed up. We called um, everyone we knew, no one seen her. Okay, and then so, ma'am, I just want to confirm, though, was she last seen from this address? The is this where you guys last saw her? No, 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 no. Um, she was last seen at the church next to Hunters Creek Middle School. I think it's called Peace Church. I'm not sure of the exact address. I think it's another operator talking in the background. Uh, she was wearing a dark green hoodie, I believe. So she's probably got a hold of Stefan and asked, what was she wearing? What is the name of the church? Uh, I think it's called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peace Church. It's the one right next to Hunters Creek Middle School. It's the, well, no, no, no. There's Got it. It's across the street from it? Um, 
I, I believe so, yeah. There's there's two. I just forgot about the other one. It's not Focal Point Church. It's... Um, well, is it Peace United Methodist Church? Yes, yes. yes okay. Yes, that one. Okay, is she diagnosed with any medical mental conditions at all? Um, I know she takes medication for ADHD, and I think that I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Sorry, bear with me here. And is she known to carry anything on her person, like a pocket knife, a pepper spray, anything at all like no, that? No, okay. no, nothing like that. Does she have a cell phone that she might keep on her person? She doesn't. She had one when she left at home conveniently today. Okay. Okay. And ma'am, what is your name? My name is... Okay, perfect. Thank you. And just so we recognize you when we arrive there, though, at the advance to come meet with you guys, are you, ma'am, white, black, Indian, Asian, or Hispanic? I'm Hispanic. And what color shirt and pants will you be wearing? Uh, pants, dark wash jeans. Uh, I have a green cardigan on and a white shirt. Thank you. And I just need to verbally confirm as all. Well, do you have any at all weapons on your person? No, I do not. Okay. All right. And are you going to be waiting for us inside? Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll probably I'll come outside. I go see through glass. I'll see when you guys show up. Okay. Perfect. Then. So then I'll get a call place for service. We'll have deputies out there to the to come and make a report with you and to come and assist with trying to find your. Okay. Okay. Her mother and my. Um. They're going to the school to double check and everything, but from what we know, she wasn't there, so they should okay. be back soon, too, because it's right next to the that's, school. Yeah, that's fine. So if, if at least one of you remains there, though, at, to meet with an officer, that's more than fine, okay? Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. Okay, then. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am, and I'll go ahead and let you go. We'll be out there as quickly as we can, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, there's the 911 call. <laughs> oh, jeez. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, anybody uh, have any other ideas? Hey, thank you so much, Annie T. I was wondering if everybody forgot about me over here. Uh, let's see. So tonight's show is really about what are the elements that make it, that are a possible evidence that Madeline stayed overnight with Stefan Stearns, not at Jen's house where she normally lives. And when did Jennifer ask Stefan to pick up Madeline. When was that? Hey, can you pick her up? Was that in the early morning hours? Or was it the night before? Or was it just something, you know, he said, hey, um, you know, he, she's, why, does she, why doesn't she stay with me? You're tired, Jen. You know, she's already sleeping over here. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. But she does say naturally, that when Madeline got home, you know, when we listen to this part right here. No, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party. See, when she got home from the party. That she had her phone or had the laptop. She that she had her phone or the laptop. So that way she, she wouldn't be able to communicate with a predator online. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she. Yeah, I know it's the one. I've played it four times on the show already, Cindy. She didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. That was the time we were celebrating. Her birthday was on Thursday, the 22nd. Hi, she just so turned 13. 
But that's just so heartbreaking to be celebrating her 13th birthday and then the very next day, She's that's gone. the last you, you see her, you've seen her for. Her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I left that part in there because it's just so lame, those two yas. That she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school. But she never made it. But she never made it that walk from and that was around 9 a.m. when she so that I guess it was 9 a.m. I, I screwed up in the video where I said she said that she got up at 9 a.m. because she words it so weirdly that my brain just went oh so she woke up at night she got up at nine she got up I guess that's when she was sitting in the parking lot though uh, she never made it to school after that um. yeah so that's all I got there So let's see. Both of them say that he was supposed to pick her up. He was supposed to pick Madeline up. And apparently did pick her up. But where was he that he would need to go from somewhere else to pick her up when he would just stay there if he was in town visiting? And let's say he was somewhere else, at a hotel, for example. How, um, why would he be over there at 7.35 in the morning? So it would, it would appear that somehow when he was staying somewhere else, he was able to get a hold of Madeline somehow and kill her. And it also, when you think about him at 7.35, he goes there. Because he knows that the backpack and laptop cannot be left in that house. So either way, if he's there, he can't leave it there either because he's taking her to school. But if he's elsewhere, and it sounds like he was, right? So he's elsewhere and has to pick her up, and yet he's taking the backpack and laptop out of the house and putting it in the garbage because he knows that it has to look like he took her to school. So that means she's dead before he went there to pick her up. Isn't that weird? So that's kind of where I'm at, where it's just a weird set of circumstances right there. When you put those together just the way I just did, it makes it seem like, I mean, I could see a situation where Jen just said, you know what, I'm going home tonight. And he goes, hey, I'll just take care of her. And she was okay with that. And he said, look, and I did you a favor, and I took care of her, and I took her to school, and now she's missing, but they're going to blame me. Can you help me out? And then she went through the whole story about, uh, repeated what he said about dropping her off there, et cetera. Uh, but then she does say naturally the part about her coming home after the party. It is natural. And thanks up there again to uh, Annie T., um, Man. Yeah, I don't know where home was for him either. But, uh, is it still clear to me where home was for Stefan at that particular time? Well, I thought he lived with his parents during this time. But he was just here visiting. But we don't know the answer to that. She sounds convinced she saw her the night before. That means she was home. Well, maybe. Just because she sounds like that. It doesn't mean she was. Silmar. She sounds convinced she saw her the night before. That means she was... No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> it means that it puts weight in that category. That's all that means. It doesn't mean that she was. Jen said she came home and was happy. I know, we just played that. I just played that on the on the screen two seconds ago. It's right here. She celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, okay, but when she says she showed us all her gifts, 
Who's us all? That can only be Stefan, because this is late at night she gets home from work. So when she said she showed us all her gifts, so that just means Stefan and her. She was, she's just a happy girl and she showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so. She showed it on Sunday night when she went to bed. See, so yeah, it's interesting how, like, she says these specific terms, like wrapping it up. Uh, so, you know, she showed it Sunday night. Um, let me, let's play that again. I mean, you could you could be skeptical of how why she's even saying these words. Sunday night when she went to bed, she was so happy. So you know, she had the best day. I just Sunday night when she went to bed, like she made made sure to get to have to say that. Sunday night when she went to bed, she was so happy. So she was so happy when she went to bed, and then not too long after that, she so, does. Say, you know, she had the best day. I just, you know, there was no, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. That was the time we were celebrating. Her birthday was on Thursday, the 22nd. Hi, she so just turned 13. But that's just so she had her phone or had the laptop she went straight to getting ready and went to bed so i know she didn't have any conversations with anyone she didn't make plans with anyone i didn't i didn't see any of that mm -hmm. yeah so she didn't have her laptop or phone etc mm said i'm learning so much thanks for the in-depth discussion cool she has the wave symbol on there everybody so let's go we're way behind tonight way behind and there's nothing uh, none of the links are getting put out there, I guess. Uh, it may have happened overnight while Jen was sleeping and he left her dead in the... Her, I don't think so. I don't think so. That doesn't make any sense. See, those things cross my mind, but I immediately rule them out. Like, yeah, he did something, then he left, but he left her dead, right? So he's leaving her dead so that Jen can find her dead? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. It's crazy. Let's see, when does a kid not take their phone into their bedroom at night? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Jen reminds me of girls that followed Charles Manson. Yeah, maybe. She must have been somebody then. I don't know what that means. That's how you do a wave. We say howdy here. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. My kid doesn't take the phone in the room at night. Ever. Okay. Yeah, but what other elements? I mean, right there, she makes it sound like she comes home. She seems believable in that one. She sounds, you know, sounds somewhat reasonable. That she came home. But man, okay, so let's say she came home. Let's go, let's do that one. So Jen come, or Madeline comes home and Stefan's probably the person who took her home. And maybe they hung out for a while in the evening. And maybe it was something like this. Like, so she started, he started partying with Jen and everything. And then she's like, I'm so tired. And he goes, hey, I'll take her to school tomorrow. And he's staying somewhere else. So maybe she assumes that he left uh, later to sleep at his place. Right? Hey, thank you very much, Silmar Sanchez. So maybe um, he's, she assumes that he left, but he's still there. And he's sort of monitoring, and he's and he could say whatever he wants. Like at seven in the morning, he could come say, "Oh yeah, I just showed back up again. I'm coming earlier. I was going to make her breakfast, etc., etc., etc." And then he 
But she's already dead, Madeline is. So he takes her out of the house. Like, she's been dead throughout the night. He's hanging out there. But she, it just seems, you know what it seems to me? It seems way too risky for him to have killed Madeline in that house and be hanging out in that house all those hours when Jen could just wake up sometime and say, hey, where's Madeline? And that would have caused all kinds of problems. Doesn't it make more sense that he took her somewhere and he killed her somewhere else, and then um, she's dead somewhere else, let's say in an apartment, uh, in a hotel somewhere. And then he goes, oh, yeah, I said I was going to take her to school. So he could show up and just say, oh, she's out in the car. Let me get the laptop in the backpack if she was awake. If not, he, he still needs to take that to make it look like he took her to school. So he takes that and he throws it in the dumpster because there's no, you know, he doesn't need to give it to her. She's not alive at that point. And then he goes back and gets her and puts her body in the car and then drives around to make it look like she's alive in the vehicle as he's driving around. Doesn't that make some, that, I think that story makes more sense than it happening at the house. It just seems crazy that she would have woke up and seen it. Or, or like at least, I, I don't know if she would have, I can't say that, that she would have woken him and seen it. What I'm saying is, would he risk that? That she might get up all those hours, you know, that he's sitting there. I think he was somewhere else with her and 1150 something when he's on Telegram that she's already dead and perhaps he's putting photos on there related to that. What do you think of that? <laughs> I bet, but the thing is, it's hard to ignore the sincerity here in this clip where she says that she made it home, okay? So, again, I'm like 70-30 that she made it home. However, the 30% is really compelling to me for some reason. Do you, are you guys feeling like that at all? Do you see that? Doesn't it make more sense that he would just go over there to get the the laptop and backpack because he knows he needs to get rid of it. Anyways, there's the numbers there if anybody wants to call in about this. Who brought her home from the party? I don't know. That's why I think maybe it was Stephen Stearns. Yeah, I think I think Jen is somebody that was intentionally picked out by Stephen Stearns as a target for his ultimate goal. And he she already had this child and he was just I mean, who know? I bet you there are instances for the whole time he was with her when Jen wasn't around, when he finally was given the trust I bet you there's always these incidents. I bet he was grooming with the little games and the lollipops and everything. He was grooming. You know, th this guy is exactly, he's a classic predator, as Kathy Chapin typed in right there. Absolutely. And I think Jen, and, the, and there's victims all the time of these types of guys, and, and the wives have no idea. Because the... The only, the only way it lasts for somebody like Stephen Stearns is if the child is hiding it from the mother for, for whatever reason. Uh, that's what these groomers try to do. Once they've, the grooming has taken place and they've got what they, wanna, they, they want, they make it so that the victim doesn't say anything to anybody. And I wonder if that's sort of what happened at the end here where he felt like he had to uh, kill her because perhaps there, there was a, there's something that was going on that made him believe that the truth was coming out. That's why the theory of her being pregnant uh, I put out there. It was just a theory, you know, something that makes sense. Like, wow, why? what changed now? He'd been doing this stuff for years and years and years. Was it the fact that she turned 13 and now she's a teen and not somebody 
in the realm of the people that he likes or and he's getting nervous that she's going to get older and older and older and then start being more free-willed and talking you know there's all kinds of different theories that you could put out there regarding that Hmm. I wonder why that doesn't show up. Let me go back to the this one and get the so if I click on that. Oh, see that shows up. Alright, there we go. I think she looks comfortable. I mean, I should do this where the comments that I read, like Vinny does, are super chats. He doesn't read any other comments other than super chats. Should we start doing that over here, you guys? <laughs> so put your comments in those. I agree with that. Just looking at her, and I believe the mom knew this poor girl and what she endured. Oh, I don't. I don't think she did at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good idea, but nobody ever puts comments in them. You know, it's weird. I'm not sure what the deal is, you guys. I mean, those are the ones that you're supposed to super chat. Like you send in a chat, and then we discuss and read what you put in them. Let's see. Well, the phone lines are open. I, 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 I'm doing this show for you guys to call in, and it doesn't seem like uh, there's a huge appetite for people to call in. They like calling the drama channels, though, and just yakking away about absolutely nothing for hours. But when you have an actual conversation, trying to work through things, people just aren't interested. All right, well, it's 2 o'clock. <laughs> it's actually two hours I've been on there. Um, created law enforcement say she died at home. Uh, no, they did not say that. They, they do not know at this point. No, those big eyes are not a telltale sign that she's lying. Hello, this is Gray. Hi, Gray. This is Kathy Chapin. Hey, how's it going? Oh, going good. Let me take my earbud out. Hang on here. Okay. Well, I, I kind of put it in chat there a little bit. I'm just kind of throwing out something here, but okay. If Stephen was at that party or did pick her up, he had her and took her. Yep. And if he did take her home where Jen got off work and they got into the house and maybe, you know, hung around for a little bit and maybe he said something to, you know, the mom like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, Maddie out for, I don't know, ice cream or something for her birthday. And mom said, great. Okay, I'm going to go to bed. And he had her mm -hmm. and did whatever he did. I mean, it's just kind of a theory there. I don't know. I mean, and that makes sense. Like, uh, I mean, so he, you know, like we were talking about, he shows up and then I had him like leaving. I mean, it doesn't make sense that he would leave and then come back and then kill her in the house or something. But it also doesn't. Right. But it's I, also hard to picture that he comes back from eating ice cream or he, he takes her a way to eat ice cream and then kills her but then because that would mean that the mom would have he would believe that she would never get up in the middle of the night to check 
you know. Well, mom, it could have happened before, and mom just let it go. I don't, you know what? I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I know a lot of people think mom might have known, but kind of looking at her, I think it was all scripted, and I think on that, you're right on this, on that one, that she didn't, mom didn't know. And I think she just poor Maddie just him. suffered in silence. I really do. And I think yeah. he manipulated. He was with this woman for, what, eight years? And I think he started with her young. And mom was off at work all day. Who knows what he was doing? I mean, well, we do know what he was doing. But yeah. I'm just saying a lot of kids just suffer in silence. They do. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Yeah. And... I've I, in this one. I I do. I believe Mom really didn't know. That's just me. Well, but no, but no, I, well, it's not just you. Know, you there's so I've been many saying theories, that. and I know people have. Well, it's not just you. Opinions. It's not just you because I've been saying the same thing, and yeah, and other people. Yeah, and I do, and I agree with that. I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah but I think I, that's a pretty I, good theory. So you're thinking that she went over there. Or he took to the park. he took Madeline back to the house after the party, and then yep. she was, then Jen was really tired after they talked for a while. And he goes, "Hey, why don't I go take her somewhere?" And yeah. but then later, I mean, do you think maybe I mean that would be kind of crazy if he brought her back in and she's like not alive? I don't or, think. <laughs> already no, t- already I don't. Her somewhere. I don't think. He, I think he put her somewhere in the woods. He took her out. Maybe took yeah. her to ice cream. Said, "Up, oh, let's go. Come on, go take you to ice cream." And mom said, "Okay, great." Oh, and then and then he could just and say, "You know what? I to decided bed. to." He could just say, "Yeah, I decided to keep her." Uh, you were sleeping, and she just stayed at my house. And then I came over to take her to school. You notice how the backpack and laptop are missing? You know, because I went and got those. That's probably maybe something like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's. Huh. I I, I think I'm sense. on there too. Could be, you know. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there, but yeah, that makes sense because these guys do groom and they are that way. And I've seen it. I've dealt with it, and I I believe that. I really do. I think that's kind of anyway. I won't keep going on, but yeah, I I think that's a pretty good theory there, Craig. Well, well thanks I for do. thanks I for agree. calling in. You're, okay. you're awesome. Okay. Kathy Chapin, right. the legend. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not a legend, yes, honey. You no, are. no, just have my opinion. No, but, you are a legend. All right, it was good to good to talk to you guys. We'll talk soon. We'll call again. Thank you. Okay, I will. Right, mm-hmm. Bye bye. She is a legend, and Kathy Chapin. I think that's a pretty decent theory there. Let's see that he. So they go to the party, you know. Stefan's there, and then he comes back home with Jen. I mean, with Madeline. I do this all the time with their names. With Madeline, and then Jen is... He, maybe he's just there hanging out with her. And then hours later, when Jen comes home from work, she's just beat. She tells the stories about the presents and everything. So this is kind of like a combination of both theories. Now it sort of Now it kind of makes some sense. Because it makes it so that uh, Jen's story is true. Because it feels like she's coming off as being truthful about that portion. So Jen's like, you know, I'm tired. And maybe he said, hey, you know what? Uh, why don't I do this or whatever? And takes her somewhere. And that's when she was killed. And then in the morning, he uh, he just says, or whatever it was, whenever he let... Jen know that he still had her and was going to take her to school but then then the lie is that she picked uh, he picked her up to go to school but that would be a lie because um, he told her to say that because man I look it looks so bad but I know I knew that you were tired so I didn't take her back home so can you help me out here I, I look like I'm really guilty so she was willing to say those types of things and I don't know, like, if he might have done something where he, I mean, it's just, it's weird, too, because there's a lot of hours in between. It must be many hours after he killed her that she was gone. So then he'd have to come back, and he got the laptop and backpack 
because he was supposed to take her to school. And he was just, I guess he just had to, and so even if Jen had woke up, I'm just working through this in my head. So even if Jen woke up, she would have said, well, where is she? Then she might have called Stefan and he said, oh, you know what? You were so tired. She's just staying over here tonight. I'll take her to school in the morning. Then he goes back over there, gets the notebook and the laptop, but knows now that Madeline's dead. So he threw the threw those items into the dumpster. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I got to go up here. Hold on a second. So Handmade in Florida said he abused her for years under the same roof as Jen. So he likely felt comfortable doing whatever once mom was asleep. Yeah, maybe he knew her pattern and like if she was a deep sleeper. You know how there's those people out there that are really deep sleepers and, uh, you know, like it doesn't matter what's going on. They're just, you know, just blazing through. You could drop a needle and I wake up. I have to wear like, uh, th what is it, 33 decibel earplugs just to, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's a psychopath or not. But you guys, currently we are 53 short of the goal. With all these 501 people watching, it should be pretty simple. All right. Most moms I know are not deep sleepers. Uh, maybe Jen is, though. I mean, ha have you really done a study on that, MM? Seriously? Like, you... Every one of your friends, they say, they, you've had a conversation where they tell you they're not a deep sleeper. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, I want you to publish that story, MM. But Jen said he came and picked her up. Oh, and also, well, uh, he, he said it, and Stefan Stearns and Jen both said that uh, he picked up Madeline. Both of them said the same thing. But I'm not sure why I'm reading those. They're, they aren't super chats. I'm going to start doing that. It works really well for Vinny's show. He just only reads those over and over and over. i got to try that. And there's also, the phone lines are open, too, if you want to call in and talk about your theory. But I thought that was a pretty good one there by Kathy Chapin. If you combine it together. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's, he's the Court TV host. But thank you. Um, I don't know, but that's not, a, you, you didn't ask a question in there. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, he was okay. The fire didn't leave the furnace. Uh, don't know what that means. All right, 43 away. 43. When your kids are infants and toddlers, you aren't a deep sleeper. But once they hit 12, I could sleep confidently and snore. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but she's 13, so maybe she was sleeping pretty good then, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, look at Robin Smith right there. One shot got us right there. Well, thank you. Very cool. I appreciate that. That's one of the, I got to turn on the sound. We haven't had one of these in a long time. It's crazy. Used to happen like four times a show, and now it's like I like to hear the sound of this. It'll be the da na 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 na. Yeah, let's do a poll here. Let's see what people are saying in the poll.
Oh, Jesus, that scared the hell out of me. Yeah! Smiley face. Well, we're only 44 away from giving away five memberships. We've only got four uh, new members tonight. So if you guys are out there and want to... It also helps support the channel if you want to get some memberships for the people who don't have them. That'd be awesome, too. <laughs> that scared me, though. Last night I was out cold, but woke to my dog and cats throwing a fit. And Robin said, smiley face. <laughs> Maybe since M didn't like to sleep alone, Jan encouraged Stephen Stearns to sleep with her on occasion. Maybe since Madeline didn't like to oh, I don't know. I that's come on. That's re that's ridiculous. I mean Jesus. Hey, thanks, L M. Uh, I think it's just sort of right below the video. It'll light. Some, something, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to people. That's up for the moderators to help you out with. I can't do a poll. I don't know enough yet. Well, I know. I, I didn't ask you to do a poll. I, I did the poll. But you just uh, learned about the case tonight, right? I think it's pretty, you can make a really good argument. I like the hybrid, though, that Kathy Chapin offered for it because it's sort of like you can, now it works. So Madeline is with Stephen Stearns at a party. Then he comes home, whatever time that was, let's say it was 7 at night or something. And then they wait around for Jen to come home. But who knows what was going on between that and the time Jen got home. And then when Jen got home, and maybe there was some things that were, going on in those hours that Keep led Stefan Stearns to know he needs to, to uh, take her life. You know, there might have been some stuff that made him really paranoid. So, Jen comes home, and she's really tired, and he goes, hey, you know, I'll take her out for uh, some ice cream, like Kathy said, right? And then he, and, uh, and, and I'll take her to school in the morning too, okay? You just sleep in. You look really tired. So then he goes away, and whatever happens, he kills her somewhere <laughs> for some reason. We don't know what the reason was. Maybe he drugged her, you know, and did something to her and then killed her. We don't really know any of that. And then she's not alive, but he's already said he's going to take her to school. And so even if Jen had woken up in the middle of the night, she would just call and say, hey, where are you? And he would say, oh, she stayed over here. You were, you were so tired, we, and we came over. We were going to eat her ice cream over here, and she just fell asleep. But I'll take her to school in the morning. She's like, okay, are you sure? Okay, yeah. All right, good night. Goes back to sleep. But in, and then in the morning, Stephen Stearns goes over to the apartment and grabs the backpack and laptop and uh, puts them in the dumpster, but he goes into the house to get it. So even if Jen had woken up, he would just say, oh, I'm just running in to grab the laptop and backpack. She's in the car. I'll take her really quick. Okay, yeah, great. But then he drops those items off in a dumpster, and then uh, it almost feels like at that point he went and got the body of Madeline and put her in the vehicle and then drove around to various places, like going to the school. She's propped up in the car. Uh, he goes down to the, you know, he's seen on the license plate reader. Uh, but then what was weird about it, though, because I was on the way back home. Why is he coming back from the school? Was he going to claim, oh, she forgot her phone or something? I mean, who the hell knows what he's doing? But that, that part of it, it just... 
seems idiotic no matter how you look at it. Can anybody come up with a rational, creative, sort of clever crime situation where Stefan Stearns would need to be driving with her, her body in his vehicle back to the apartment complex or condo complex at 819. Can anybody think of a good reason to do that? Because that doesn't help the, well, she was sleeping in the car theory. That doesn't help that at all. Yeah, we, we all say that, uh, Domi, everybody. Now, she didn't do anything to him, though. But she did get, uh, something happened to her that night. She didn't do it, though. I, I know what you're trying to, you know, there's these whole people that think Jen's this uh, psycho serial killer. You don't think that Stefan Stearns at this point would have already spilled the beans on that, if that was true? They know that he did it. Wow, what happened up there? Did somebody get kicked out? After? Yeah, that uh, the ad thing where everybody gets kicked off to the beginning. Now, if you tell YouTube that that exists as a problem, they say, can you have them record it? <laughs> no, I can't, YouTube. Just fix it, okay? They want you to record everything, like little details. You, hey, everybody, if it's not too much of a problem for you, can you spend all day trying to... Uh, wait for an ad to pop up and, and then record you getting kicked back to some other portion. Yeah, I don't think so. If he was uh, if he was at fault, don't you think he will be charged already as well? No, we've already gone through that whole thing. Don't. He's already been arrested with no bail. They're not in a hurry. They're just doing everything they can to get all their search warrants. They're going to put together the a masterful case, almost as if it's going to trial, prior to charging him with it. And in that case, it'll be so overwhelming to his attorney, he'll probably go, "Hey, we need to plead here. This, you know, this isn't working." Uh, yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. Thank you, Kitty Cat. Don't you think she was? Covering for her predator boyfriend. Well, she she was covering for him. Uh, but she just did it like he told her what happened and she believed it. She says she saw her daughter and she was actually dead. Right, I know. But listen to this. Listen to this, kitty cat. Listen. So here's this is how it went. This is what I'm picturing in my head. That, uh, you know, Stephen Stearns, he, he knows what he did, but Jennifer was sort of in the dark and she felt a little guilty too because she slept in and he's the one who took her to school, but now he's going to get in trouble. So she fed, he fed Jennifer a story about, okay, yeah, I drove her, dropped her off by the church. Uh, you know, it was around this time and this time and I dropped her off. And then he also said, can you also say that you saw her getting ready? In the morning because you know she he was she was actually with me you know that right but can you just say that you saw her getting ready so this is another piece of information that I mentioned earlier that I think the eight o'clock in the morning comment is a huge piece of information that also helps this theory but like eight in the morning can you just say that she, you saw her getting ready because if you don't say that it'll all come back on me do you get it so can you just tell her, tell them that you saw it? Eight, and she knew that wasn't a true statement at all. He knew, uh, she knew when saying that, that it wasn't true, but was willing to she do it for him for because boyfriend. he's she the one. She saw her daughter and she was actually dead. Right. And she's the one that actually uh, was asleep and didn't take her daughter to school. But he's the one that did it. So she, he guilted her into telling these fibs. I bet you anything that that is exactly what happened. That's my theory anyway. You know, um, I know people want Jennifer to be some psycho. It makes it a lot more interesting. You can watch a lot more YouTube channels that, that'll go into that for hours and hours and hours with no information. But what I'm looking at is I'm looking at Jennifer Soto and it could be wrong. 
But I'm looking at her as the typical uh, victim of, you know, this type of situation. I, mean, I consider her a victim too. You know, her child was killed by a predator boyfriend who tricked them all. And that's the classic thing. There's almost none of these cases where a wife or, or a girlfriend was totally into it. Yeah, kill her. You know, I mean, it just doesn't happen. I mean, it's really rare if those happen. Well, Gray, what about this case? Okay, well, it's, I'd say one in a thousand have that. But there are, I would say, tens of thousands of relationships just like this. Yes, Veruca Salt, we blocked you. Ding, 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 ding. All right, 32 away from five membership gifting, everybody. Only time will tell, Gray. Yep, you're right, only time will tell. But it's, it's not going to be... I, I can't say it's impossible that Jen will get some charges of some sort. No, I can't say that. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't read minds. But my opinion is, based on watching her, we know for certain once Jen says that Stephen Stearns is the one who drove uh, Madeline to school, um, then we know that the story that she's telling about the trip prior to that, well, we dropped her off at the church and da 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 All of that stuff then was fed to her by Stephen Stearns. You get what I'm saying? I was never grumpy, Zozo. You might be, though. Uh, Plato, remind Gray he needs to announce he has finished setting up the poll and that people may have to go out and come back in if they don't see the poll. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that. So the poll is, did Madeline spend the night with Stephen Stearns? And 75 said yeah. So Wait, let me, let me do a new poll, though, because I think that one doesn't really work. That's not really the question. So 75% said yeah. So here it is right here. Let's see. I was joking with you, Veruca Salt. Like, if I can read your comment, then no, you weren't blocked. All right, let's see. Uh, did Madeline spend the night with Stefan Stearns um, not at Jen's place? Now, let's see what the... Um, what the totals are on this one. I bet you it's a little smaller because I think a lot of people think in the apartment she he spent the night with Madeline. All right, let's see what we get here. Uh, why? She, why would she necessarily have to take the phone? Did she have the phone at the birthday party? Yeah, maybe she did, right? So if she had the phone at the birthday party, is that what you're saying? Let's see. I agree with her that, but all that could be a cover-up. Uh, I don't I don't think so, Domi. You, I, you sound like a conspiracy person. I, I don't believe in those things very often. Very rare. So you think Stefan was at Jen's house? Okay. If he stayed with her at his apartment, she would have her phone at his house. I mean, it depends. Not in the story that Kathy Chapin... We, you missed the first part of the story, Zozo. Obviously. Because what we were saying was, is that... Uh, let's see. That Stefan takes Madeline home from the party, and then they wait for Jen to get home. And then when Jen gets home, she's really tired and beat... They talk about the presents and everything. And then uh, Stefan says, hey, I'll take her out for uh, late ice cream. We'll be back. And she goes, oh, okay. And, he, uh, and then he said, and also I'll come by and take her to school in the morning. Then he goes and takes her somewhere and he kills her. Then he drives back in the morning to get the notebook and the laptop because, and maybe she left the phone at the apartment right then. And then, and maybe he made it so that her phone was left there so she couldn't be tracked. Doesn't that make a little bit more sense too even? 
that he's the one when he took her, has the phone stay there so it looks like she's still in the house so that when he gets the laptop and the backpack, it looks like she's there. He bring, he goes in there, grabs them, and then he takes them. And then her phone was left there, though, so he should have taken the phone with him on that trip. There's a pull in chat. If you can't see the pull, that's ah, not really that far fetched, Sozo. You must have missed it. Makes total sense. It's, makes more sense than uh, the other the other version. I mean, just showing up in at the last bit here and then uh, saying, "Oh, it's far fetched." It's kind of ridiculous because you didn't listen to the whole show leading up to it. All right. Let's see. In any of the their interviews, do do either him or Jen say what time he left that evening? Uh, no, none of them. I don't even know what that means, Sedona Skies. Nobody knows what that means. Uh, he wouldn't be comfortable taking her to his parents house so either killed her at the apartment yeah I mean like I said in the, my video it's like 70% that it was at the apartment but I think there's a pretty decent chance that he had her somewhere else and 54% of the people up there believe it in the poll that that's a possibility that he took Madeline and brought her somewhere else and that's where he killed her and then in the morning, he goes back to get the laptop and backpack and literally could just say, hey, I'm coming into the laptop and backpack. I'm taking her to school. And he needs to take that out of there because if he took her to school without that, it would look suspicious. So he goes in and gets those and then throws that into a dumpster. And then at 819, he's, it makes way more sense of all of the information of doing that. I mean, it sounds absolutely crazy to be, he's in the apartment at 7.30 and he's throwing away, he goes outside and throws away stuff in the dumpster and Jen's still sitting around in bed and everybody's just, there's like a body in the house and nobody's noticing anything. And I don't know, that, that part seems more far-fetched to me. Where did this apartment come from? What do you mean? It's a condo, I guess, but it's Jennifer's apartment. All right, guys, 31-something away from the five memberships. I said that 10 minutes ago and made no progress on that. But let's see if we can do it because we get a, we can give away five more. And I'll tell you what, if you guys give away six memberships, I'll still give away the five memberships. Well, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It makes sense. It makes more sense. No, you, you got it completely backwards, Zozo. You... Yeah, that's not what we said at all. You missed it. Uh, let's see. There's people here that have no clue about the case. should go back and check all the previous videos from Gray before. Yeah, I made a lot of videos on it. Yeah, uh, the the story we're saying is more makes more sense. <laughs> you know, what is he doing? He's got the body in her car at his car at seven thirty five, and then he throws a laptop and backpack in the dumpster, and then he drives away. No, you didn't listen to it. No, it, it's you're doing it, so so you're needling my comments and you're not listening. Okay, I know you're not listening because what you said isn't accurate. All right, so it says, uh, I think you're the one that came in. Hey, Gray, is he still grumpy? And then every comment you made is disagreeing intentionally to something that makes more sense. I don't think mom could be made to feel guilty for sleeping when she works. I 
don't think mom could be made to feel guilty for sleeping when she works. Huh? I don't know. Yeah, so what we're saying is, uh, as a possibility, is that Madeline was killed elsewhere in the middle of the night, but he was already supposed to pick her up in the morning because she wanted to sleep in. And that's why he comes back, gets the laptop and the backpack, puts it in a dumpster, and that's all he's doing. Her body isn't in his car or anything. He just shows up, puts the laptop and the backpack in the dumpster. You notice how law enforcement didn't say they saw her body in the vehicle. Then he drives away and gets her body and puts it in the car and then does the charade of taking her to school with her body propped up in the vehicle, perhaps. I think that makes more sense than, okay, uh, he's at the apartment and she's dead in the middle of the night and then somehow uh, she, uh, she's dead in the middle of the night and then in the morning uh, Jen just doesn't wake up at all and somehow uh, he moves her body to a car during the night when Jen's sitting there and then he puts something in a, the dumpster and then he props her up when he drives away and, and around. I don't know. Whatever, whatever it is. I, I, we're just theorizing here. But it makes more sense, actually. It makes more sense logically because we don't actually know all the details that law enforcement has. They might have a video of the car in the, in the, in the apartment complex, right? There might be like a car in the apartment complex that uh, shows him, you know, leave the complex after he puts the backpack and the laptop in the garbage. They might have that on video. And then he drives away and then he comes back at 819 with her body visible. But was her body visible when he left at 735? Maybe they have that information, but if it's not visible at 735 and they don't think she's even in that car, then where the, where the hell was she? Did he go get her from somewhere else? And if she was somewhere else, was it like early in the morning he killed her and then snuck her out and put her in a car and drove her somewhere? But how would that have gone over if, let's say, Jen woke up at 5 in the morning and then walked in the room and said, hey, where is she? Oh, uh, uh, she's, uh, she's staying at my place and I came over here. Yeah. Thank you, Amy Moore. Let's get this goal. My non say no to lulls. <laughs> right. Anyways, I don't think it's, um, I think it makes sense in some ways, you know. There's some ways because uh, Jen actually says that she, um, what was it? She said that. You know, she did come home. So that's why if you do the hybrid story where it's just, you know, I mean, who knows like, oh yeah, let's, I'm gonna take her to go get ice cream. Ocean I mean, wave. Wave. who knows if that's how it went. It could be as simple as this. Okay, let's do it this one. That they come home, let's see. Um, Stefan and Madeline come home from the party. They wait around for Jen. They look at the presents, then she goes, I'm beat, I gotta go to sleep. And he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll take her to school in the morning, all right? And she goes to sleep. Stefan and Madeline stay up. And at some point in the middle of the night, she's maybe about to say something, because he's trying something, and he kills her. And then he's Puts her and puts her in, her in his car and he sneaks outside and he drives her and puts her somewhere. Then he came all the way back in the morning. Uh, he only shows up back though around 7.30 to come in to get the backpack and laptop because he's supposed to take her to school in the morning. And he goes in and grabs that, goes over to a dumpster, puts it in and takes off, does all the crap he's doing all through the day, puts her body out somewhere. And he just waited for Jen to go to the school and find out she wasn't there. And he's like, whoa, that's crazy. I dropped her off. That makes some sense there too, right? That story, that version right there, that actually sounds pretty reasonable, right? 
I think he took her somewhere in the middle of the night. I, I, I have a hard time believing that he would just put her body in the car or leave it in the house until like early in the morning at 7. It feels like he put her somewhere in the middle of the night. And if that's true, then there's going to be another, you know, logging of his vehicle leaving the area. Yeah, there's like a million. Uh, you can come up with a thousand different theories, really. Hey, thanks, Lisa L. Hey, we're only 22 short of the five memberships. Thanks, Zozo. I was waiting for your approval. Can you sign that? I, I'm going to send the um, approval letter over to you. <laughs> Look at that. And Wild Wyatt even has a pin to sign the damn thing. It's amazing. I have it right here. You can hear that, Wild Wyatt? Is that what you're hearing? Here, look at this is what it looks like. Look at this. So if you send, where the hell is this thing? I got it right here. Look at. If you send thirty dollars to PayPal, you get one of these, the Chloe notebook, with the blue freak pen, and a freak heart stress ball, which I can't seem to find sitting here. But it's a freak heart uh, stress ball. And I even sign the damn thing and ship it off. All right. Now those got to be worth a lot more now because I've been on Court TV a couple times, right? So the <laughs> yeah, we're gonna sell those at auction in a few years. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Oh, you can hear the pen. Well, it's weird because it looks just like the one that you have in the picture. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Although it's black at the bottom there well cool Ali. I got a whole bunch to send out too like this weekend I'm probably gonna work on a bunch of all, all of them actually mm -hmm. so who's gonna get five memberships for somebody if you do that I'll send five and two then we'll reach the goal not monetarily on the screen but with memberships and I'll send the five then can I use the stress ball every time um, no <laughs> I love the notebooks I filled up three already well I'm going to be taking them to uh, bring some to Delphi. Oh, look at that. There we go. We'll do it. We'll do it. House Music, Miss Bridge, Veruca Salt, who's hidden from the channel, got one. Domi and Brad Lucas. Hey, Brad Lucas, aren't you sort of related to the Delphi case in some ways? I mean, that name sort of popped up in the, I don't know, something like that. I don't know if it's the exact one. But. Okay, I got, I'm trying to open up the live stream. So hold on, I've got to send it in. When it's time for spring, it's time, it's time for to spring. Everybody enjoy your... And there we go, right there. And who's going to get these? All right, so uh, we got House Music, Miss Bridge, Veruca Salt, Domi, Brad Lucas, then Tammy D, Kimberly Sheets. Mrs. C, Bellamy, and Ops, I don't even say Ox, Obs, Hag. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. So, what are you guys thinking about this? Let me get the, that phone number up again. If anybody has any thoughts on this, uh, 
I think that last one sort of makes, you know, it's the most logical one. But I feel like she was removed from the house before Jen woke up. But what would he have said, though? See, that's one of the problems, though. What would he have said if Jen woke up and he would he just say, yeah, I picked her up early for school to get her an early breakfast. But look at her backpack and laptop are gone, so we, you know, I, I don't know what he would say. So he had to rely on some luck in this one. How would he do this without luck, though? Like, what would make it where there's no element of luck regarding... Uh, Jen, because it seems like he would really think through this, don't you? Like he would think through it and really plan it out. What would he do to um, minimize the luck portion? Like almost have none. See, that's why it seems like the other one makes more sense where you go, he says to Jen, you know, hey, uh, why, why don't you just stay at my house? For some reason, he takes her over there because she wants to go to sleep, and they're going to play games, so it's going to be noisy. She wants to sleep. Because if, get if he gets her out of the house, it all works with no luck. You get it? Because once she's out of the house, he could kill her, and he was supposed to take her to school in the morning because that's probably what he said he was going to do. So he would just show up and leave the car outside, get the backpack and laptop and say that he was if she was awake he'd say oh i'm just grabbing your notebook and laptop for her. I'm taking her to school and then she might have said well god it's kind of early for that and he'd say oh yeah we're gonna go have breakfast you know whatever it's simple to do but she's not there um i mean she'd have to get up out of bed and run down and say where is she where is she you know but she wouldn't do that because she trusted him Jen Madeline was going to spend the night with him beforehand. You're right, right. So that would work. How come what, Kathy Chapin disappeared after she made the phone call? Where did she go? <laughs> I, I've been waiting for her follow-up comments. I haven't seen any. I have a feeling he was good at sneaking around with her. Oh, she's here? Okay. I thought her her coming up with a theory like that was cool because it, it it opens the door in your mind of how you know, maybe, you know, can make you think of other theories sort of in that same realm. She knew everything that was happening even that day. Call 911 was hours later. No, Domi, you, you, you got things wrong, man. Yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in that theory, Domi. Because I don't I don't believe it at all. I like to talk about things that I think have a good chance of being reality, and that doesn't. It's a waste of time. I I don't see any way that Jen's part of it. Like a plot to kill or something. It just sounds insane. Could, I could be totally wrong, but I'm not willing to have that conversation because I don't see it. Gray, what do you think about Jen saying Madeline was seen on... Well, the, the, there was somebody there. <laughs> I, I, here's the thing about that. It's just pure luck. I said it in one of my iterations of the video today, but I didn't make it to the final. It's just pure freaking luck that there was somebody on that camera walking around because they were told that police even looked at it and said we don't believe that's her so there is a person there. 906 hello you got to turn down the audio in the background yeah you got to turn down the audio in the background yep yeah who's oh, this oh yeah it's down Okay, cool. Who's this? Uh, this this is tree. Tree. Yes. Like tree, like a tree, like a with leaves. Yeah, whatever kind of leaf you like. <laughs> okay. All right. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
I just wanted to know, like, okay, so Maddie had the party, right? So her mom was at work during the party. Yeah. Where did she go after the party? Who did she leave with? Did she stay at the grandma's house? Well, that's the or, thing. That's what like, we're not really sure about. But, I mean, we you would think that Stefan Stearns, who's sort of like, you know, considered a father in their little world there, that that she, uh, that he uh, drove her home at some point after the party. But who knows where, I mean, what time did Jen get home and how much time was there between the end of the party and Jen getting home? You know, what were they doing during that time frame, you know? Exactly, and then he didn't even he didn't even live with them. Like the mom and Stefan had broke up, and he was like staying with his parents or something. And mm-hmm. he like, came in town for the party. Right. Exactly. So if he was in town, he would have been staying like at a friend's house, or he would have like got a hotel room. Like so, I'm just like I'm perplexed mm-hmm. as to like what. Well, doesn't it seem like the though? But, but but she kept referring to him as her boyfriend. So even though they sort of broke up, maybe when he would come into town, he would stay with her still. But it doesn't sound like that because they both said that he picked up Madeline in the morning. So why would he have to pick him up if he's living there or staying there that night? Wouldn't he, wouldn't he just exactly. take her to school, right? Right. He would just get up and take her. Like, why would he have to come pick her up? Because he wasn't staying there. I don't think he was there. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was ever there. And then, like, what was going on when he was on the Telegram? Like, what was he doing yeah. during that time? Well, that part's was, really concerning because that's right around. I mean, if Jen got home, well, we don't know what time she got home, but let's say she got home at 10 or something or 11. Let's say she got home at 11. And it, at that house is Jen. I'd like to know where the ping of the Telegram came from. That would be amazing. But. Was Jen, Madeline, and Stefan all at the house at 11, let's say, and then Jen goes to sleep because she's really tired, and Madeline and Stefan are still awake, and then at 11.49 or so, he's on Telegram, 40-something minutes, you know, like 30 minutes after she might have gone to bed or something. I mean, that's pretty crazy. What What is he doing on that app? I mean, that app isn't really a famous app at all. It became more popular during the Israeli-Palestinian uh, situation because they, they would put the actual videos on there. But what is he doing on there? It's really known for, has a lot of, I mean, that's not all it's known for, but it's used by predators. So. I mean, I'm familiar with the app because um, I was going to do like a fun, like an interview and that the employer wanted to do the wanted to communicate through Telegram. So that's the only reason why I know about Telegram. And now but, did you notice that they start encrypting the messages on Facebook Messenger? Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh. They just started. They just started it like last week. Oh, is that what that message I got was or something where it said mm-hmm. you had to type in a passcode to get to type in? Yeah. A... Oh, weird. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So now Facebook Messenger is like Telegram. Everything's encrypted. And like if you want to like send a picture to somebody, uh, like before Messenger used to have access to like all your videos, all your pictures, you have to like go in, select the picture, allow the picture to pop up. And then you have to go back in to be able to send it. So now Telegram is kind of like Messenger now. Like, everything's encrypted. Like, so even if something happens, the police or nobody can go in and, like, get any of that information. It's just, like, gone forever. Oh. Hey, could you hold on one second? I forgot something. Hey, LM did gift five memberships up there. I missed those. So it was MM and then LM gifted five memberships. But I was already talking to somebody, so I missed that. So thank you, LM. Miss those ones. Um, anyways, yeah, no, it's just uh, I don't know. I don't know. That, it's like I, a that, bizarre. Yeah, it's, it's so bizarre because yeah, it's crazy. Isn't it? I'm trying to figure out if she didn't have to go to school or be at school till nine thirty in the morning. What is he doing up with her at seven o'clock in the morning, trying to take her quote unquote to school? 
Yeah, so was, where, where, when you, school. did you learn about the Telegram by watching the video that I made or me on Court TV or what? Which because I did a whole um, thing yeah, on. I, okay. I watch you. I catch you on uh, Court TV. I catch you on YouTube. Like I'm a fan. Oh well, well I was I saying we well we did a we did a whole video. I did a video before I was on Court TV about the the Telegram. With Benny, right? Yeah, right. But I did the yeah. uh, video regarding the telegrams. Like somebody said, um, what did they just type in? They said, so so what? He used Telegram. <laughs> See, Jesse, uh, go look at what Telegram is used for. It's uh, there that and I think it was, I don't know if it was Reddit or I think it was Snapchat or something. They're like one of the the two largest predator websites where uh, they were using. A whole community to uh, get people to uh, they take a get a somebody to send something in then they would say we're gonna share this with your family if you don't do this and this and this and then it's this massive ring on telegram so why is Stefan Stearns on telegram the same night that he kills a girl in the and he's been assaulting her exactly what these people do on telegram right? Not all of them. I'm just saying there's a large community on there. So, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Well, Jesse's clueless. So I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just kind of a weird comment. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, we I did a whole video on it. Let's see. Oh, uh, no. I... uh, let, well, would you have any last thoughts on it? Any more thoughts? It's been interesting talking oh. to you, though. I'm just, I've been following the case and I'm just, I'm like everybody else. I'm just waiting to, you know, hear what, what's next and what comes out, you know, in the future. Yeah. And well, thank you for like continuing to talk about the case. Cause I feel like, you know, it got a lot of attention at first and then other things started to happen. So, yeah, you know, people start focusing on that and I feel like the case is kind of like dwindling away, but Thank you for like keeping it alive. Like I appreciate. Yeah, it. well, I, well, that's cool. I mean, I appreciate that. But uh, th I mean, also you got to look at it like this: is an arrest has already been made, her body was found, and now we're just kind of waiting for the legal system to take place. But there's other cases right now that are interesting too, and they don't have resolution on various things, like uh, the Caleb Harris case. He just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth. But there's a lot of really interesting information that. He was on these sites and was supposed to meet up with somebody that night. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also, um, you know, those, those two missing women in Oklahoma that just kind of had their, you know, they're just gone. But there's not a lot of information in that one, so there's nothing to talk about. But the, the I see, I see <laughs> yeah. But, well, there's there's two women that were in a car. They were supposed to pick up their... Uh, their the kids. Yeah, the kids. That that whole case. There's just no information. Yeah, I've seen that. That that was weird. Yeah, it's a weird one. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'll keep bringing but, it up. Um, like, I'll but keep... I noticed a lot of kids have been um, gone missing, like lately. Yeah, like Sebastian up Rogers. You know, that's another big one that everybody talks about. Sebastian Rogers is one of those ones too. There, we're just in like a really dead area where there's there's almost no information whatsoever coming out they're just looking for him that's it there's nothing i mean it's hard to you know today tonight's show was interesting because i was thinking that it makes sense to theorize that she was killed elsewhere or spent the night with um Stephen stern somewhere else so i wanted to see what people were thinking and it seems like it's not really that far-fetched as somebody likes to say <laughs> oh. anyways but hey uh, I'm glad you watched the show and you called in. But don't worry, I'll, I'll keep covering this case over time, you know. It's one of the ones that I, you know, I interviewed four different people. I don't know if you ever watched those, the four interviews with friends that I did. Oh, no, I haven't seen those. I'm going to go um, check that out on your channel. Well, yeah, the video that I just made, put out today, if you go to the very end, the the last screen has a link to the video where I interviewed four, I put them all together, all four interviews, so you can listen to them. They're, they're creepy, the stuff that they said. They, um, they saw. Did you see that, um, did you see that 
Um, it was like Seth and Stern's ex girlfriend. She had called in on one, on somebody's show, and she was talking about him and the relationship that she had during the time she was with him. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really, li- I didn't really cool? listen to that stuff. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know. I think a lot of times the the guy friends make more like they seem more like they they were hanging out with him so they could see the stuff. It's interesting to have a girl call in, but you sort of wonder sometimes if they're just, you know, like piling in well, on the story, and I don't know. Um, well, I don't know. Like, I listened to the interview, and then I kind of went and did my own research uh-huh. to see, like, if some of the stuff she was saying was credible, and it seemed like she was, like, pretty credible, like, in the things that uh-huh. she was saying. She was talking about his mom his mom Deb and she was uh-huh. saying like how like you know she had got she, I guess she had two kids well yeah the, well the mom and, is pretty crazy you know like uh, apparently yeah <laughs> I mean those she, are those are in those interviews that, that I did I mean she said that the mom was like like something happened with like his him and his roommate or him and his friend and the mom came in the restaurant and gave the gave the friend an envelope and told him to keep his mouth shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was in the my interview. Okay, that was your interview. Okay, okay. Well, no, I mean I don't know if she did the same. That she mentioned the same thing, but that's in the first interview that I did. I don't know. I just feel like they've been knowing that he's been a predator like i feel like you know some of the 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 things he's been doing over the years the mom has been like covering up for him and like you know that's her baby like you know so she'll like do whatever she has to do to like you know keep him out of trouble and now there's nothing that she can do now Mm -hmm. yeah well um (laughs) There's a lot of crazy angles in this case. A lot of interviews out there, a lot of information coming in. But we're just not getting all the information from law enforcement to really come up with a clear theory. You know, like if, I wish they'd just give us more timeline information. I think that would work great. So, anyways. Well, hey, thanks for calling in. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Have back. a great night. We'll call in again sometime. Thank it was, you. It was interesting. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Cool. All right. Uh, the note. If you send thirty to PayPal, you get the notebook, pen, and a stress ball. It's like a heart. It looks like the hearts that fall down at the beginning of the show. Come on, Jesse. Don't you ever just think that your um, your comments are what are creating the issues? I mean, go back and read your comments. It's like you don't really understand what people are saying. We've been doing this for a long time, and when we, we're theorizing, it's not just irrational, meaningless uh, thoughts, okay? Now, and also, if you're in... Uh, UK or Australia or whatever you have, you have to send in I think what did I say 40 because the shipping is like ridiculous in the United States I can ship anywhere for like five bucks or something but if you send to the UK it's um, uh, got like 20 you know, uh, 17 to 20 and then Australia is like 20 something you bastards <laughs> Anyways, I think that's going to do it, you guys. Three hours and two minutes. Crazy. But I wanted to say thank you up there to uh, Almost Made It, who generously gifted five memberships along with LM and MM up there. So that was cool. We got 24 new channel members because of the generosity of the freaks. Anybody have any last thoughts? My stomach's going nuts over here.
I'm sure there's cameras. We don't get to know the answer to the question. And we don't know where he was staying either when he was there. Was he staying with her and they made up the story about him picking her up? We don't know. But anyways, thank you to Kathy Killeen, Callie Gal 3, Pixie Blue, uh, Amy Moore became a new member, Allie Cake, Billy Barker, Jessica Hood, Lisa Holland, Plato, Simply Me, Jerry, new member, Peter Mmm, Amy Moore, Shelly Rock Girl Media, Pixie Blue, Kami, Kathy Chapin, January Jop, uh, Music City Mom 2, Kathy Chapin, Alley Cake, Music City Mom 2 is eight months. Thank you. Uh, Christina Preston, Cheryl, Vat Cap JB, Danny ICURN, MM became a new member, Alley Cake, I the Moment. Annie T, MM, Super Chat, uh, We Say Howdy Here, and then Silmar Sanchez, and then, thank, thank you very much to all the callers, too, Kathy Chapin, I think Silmar called in, Tree, uh, Handmade in Florida, Alley Cake, MM, and then Robin Smith with the one and only cat eye tonight. Thank you very much. LM. Um, Lil Puppy Paws 99. Uh, Kitty Cat. Amy Moore. Lisa L. Uh, Lisa L. 10 months. Thank you very much. MM. Gifted five memberships. LM. Gifted five memberships. Then I gifted five memberships, and then almost made it gifted five memberships, and then Paulette Leonard, right at the end there. Anyways, thank you guys very much. If you guys find the show interesting and, and made you think about things a little bit, I think I think we're getting close to what re, you know the reality of it. There's some sort of combination of Madeline's body not being at the house when he went there to do the laptop and backpack scenario. Don't you think that there's something like that's there? Like she was already gone before he came back and did that. And then between 7.35 and, you know, 8 o'clock is when he retrieved her from wherever she was. And that's why he's showing back up with her in the vehicle later at 8.19. Hey, welcome, Heather N. Anyways, thank you guys for all your generosity and listening to me trying to get <laughs> you guys to send in and keep us going. And, you know, like it does support my channel, but, you know, I'm trying to, you know, bring in a certain amount of income so that I can give a lot away. If it was only a certain amount, then I wouldn't be able to give as much. You, you just can't do it. You know, you got to have, you know, have an income doing the shows and like doing these shows is you know takes a lot of effort and time and you know like today I made a video I did the show and you know I hope it's okay with you guys I, I, you guys have been absolutely amazing over the years since January of 2020 even before that really I mean we made donations the year before that as well that became our thing and then two years ago, uh, from the income from the channel, I gave $62,000 to various charities throughout the year. Now, there's other channels out there that get Super Chats in, like it's a, a bingo. I mean, it's just like ding, 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 ding. And then they put up a, a link for people to donate to a charity, but they don't give anything out of their income at all, right? So... On this channel, that's sort of the the model is everybody helps support the channel and then throughout the month and at the end of the month, I send in money to various charities out of the income from the channel and you guys are the ones that make that happen. And that's from the, 
uh, like so far this year, we are at, uh, what is it? 15,000 so far this year. So last month was a really good month because there's a whole bunch of cases at the same time. So there's a lot of ad revenue on various videos. So I was able to donate quite a bit more. So right now we're kind of at an average of, um, we're almost at 5,000 a month. We're, it was 14.5, but we gave 500 this month already. So we'll see where this month takes us. Who knows, right? Anyways, thank you guys again for being here. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's even listening to what I'm saying, but thank you for being here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And a one and a two. We'll see what the, uh, let's look at the dogs for a second first. Yep, yep, they're just sitting there staring. I got to go make them some food, though. So they're waiting for a snack, something to eat. <laughs> you know, look at just uh, squint your eyes a little bit and look at Chloe. If she was pink, would you even be able to see her? Like literally, like her hair is exactly the same. Like you could just, if she was pink, she'd be completely, yes, we're talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing Good this night, everybody. for quite a while now. Gee. And during this whole time, well, I was kind of early there, one wasn't person it? That is a crime dissector, the rejector. I'm a certified human lie detector. I'm gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. The fabric is gonna, gonna give another, another lecture. Crime collector, freak actor. With a vector on his pector, with all respect, y'all. Just, Just remember, I have a temple fucking check, That's I right, Bruce Gasol. I'm gonna tell Violet Bullery guy. I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. Augustus the Loop, Charlie, Mike TV. On a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. You're turning violet, Violet. Gooses, geeses. That's Veruca Salt, man. Jeez, what a spoiled brat that person was. I hope you're nothing like that, Veruca Salt, in here. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you later. And be safe out there. I want it now, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>